Hey guys, brand new podcast. I sound a little rumbly, don't I? I will not be sitting in this seat. Ooh, tour dates. I am heading to the East Coast for the next two weeks. I will be in New Jersey, uh, Worcester, Worcester, how do you say it? Massachusetts, Poughkeepsie, uh, Brooklyn, Providence, Rhode Island, Portland, Maine, Albany, New York, Reading, Pennsylvania, Baltimore. We've added a show in Baltimore, University Park, Pennsylvania, Norfolk, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm performing, I'm performing at the Grand Ole Opry. Do you know that? That is fucking awesome. I was telling Brooke about that. Yeah. I'm in Grand Junction, Colorado, Salt Lake City, Boise, Boise, Spokane, Spokane, Los Angeles. I'm at the Greek. May 5th. I saw Los Angeles. I was like, I'm performing in Los Angeles. Um, I can't wait. Go to burtburtburt.com to get your tickets. Uh, and uh, and I hope you guys enjoy today's podcast. Uh, thank you to all the sponsors. Today's podcast is with the two women from Guys We Fucked, Corinne Fisher and Christina Hutchinson. They uh, have a new special out on YouTube right now. You can go to the Guys We Fucked page on YouTube, subscribe. More importantly, I have great conversations with these women. Uh, as you know, I'm kind of an open book, so I don't mind sharing everything. We talk about uh, we talk about broken men. We t- I share my my periods of broken mandom. Um, we talk about we talk about countries of where of people we'd like to have sex with. We talk. I talk about Leanne. I talk about my, my, my relationship with Leanne. We talk about the perfect age for a woman meeting like to meet her at we I, I think in the 30s we share a lot right mm-hmm. it's a it's a therapy session for the first hour for you i would say for <laughs> really sure. yeah definitely and then you guys get into a bunch of fun stuff yeah. yeah and then it gets fun um yeah i don't know what i don't know they're just really great people and and they're really they're really fantastic comics they're really great podcasters they're I think we're really lucky to have them, you know? I, and I mean that, like, in in the the big swath of the comedy community, I'm really glad I know these two women. They're fucking cool as shit. And, uh, and I say it at the end of the podcast, but hopefully one day my daughters will s- lis- be listening to their podcast, going through a breakup or something, and we'll be finding solace in them and then find out that I'm friends with them, and then I'll get some street cred. But, uh... But it's a great podcast. I just want you to listen to it. Without further ado, my two friends, Corinne Fisher and Christina Hutchinson. Can I? Yeah, do you mind do, if I put my do, shoes You can do whatever. You can do whatever you want. I know usually like, you like to be barefoot and picking your toes. No, no. I, I, <laughs> by the way, I'm fucking. That is my entire MO is barefoot and picking my toes. Yeah, that's how God intended. I, I, I don't even realize I'm doing it sometimes. I'm. I have habits like that. Like I'll pick like this on my lip or something. And I realize I'm in public talking to somebody I don't know well. And I'm like, oops. Oh, I will. Uh, if I find something on me, I'll smell it. And <laughs> people will be like, what the fuck are you doing? My yeah, ex-boyfriend used to eat it. My ex-boyfriend used to like pick up and eat what? it. And I'm like, and he didn't realize he was doing it. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, I was like, is this okay? Like, can I sit like this or do I have can, to have my back fully against here? This is what sucks. There's this when we time? did this, I, I, I was like, I was like, you know, it'll be nice to have a studio in my house. Yeah. That way I don't have to go anywhere. Sure. Yeah. But it's extremely, uh, I said to Leanne this morning when I woke up, I said, I feel like an open wound. And, and I feel like, like, cause I'm, I'm doing podcasts these days. I'm talking so much yeah. that I'm like sharing secrets about what's going on with my daughter in a weird way to like, Feel, not to fill content, but I go, that's what's going on with me. Right. right. Well, sometimes you talk things out to like figure out how you feel about it or like kind of, you know, d- dive deeper into the situation. And it, it's hard to go, oh, this is not what I want to be taught. Like, it's hard to have that part of your brain turn on when and you're and, on the mic. And when you're like us, and I, I, I just feel like the three of us are very similar, open. Very open. No, no secrets. Yeah. It, you, you all of a sudden like people know everything about no <laughs> it's, everything it's I almost know, like it's everyone terrifying. becomes your therapist mm-hmm. oh yeah oh people love diagnosing me via dm and i'm like I, what are you what's or wrong the streets with streets of new york we'll be walking and someone will be like hey you're still talking you're still not talking to your mom i'm like no oh god That's, oh god yeah. that is um i forgot you guys all know that it's yeah. insane I, it's really insane when you think about where this is turned in what this has turned into 
It's wild. It's Everyone's like, reading our journal do? with us. Yep. Everyone knows it's our, our diary. diary. Yeah. Um, People will ask like oh, on like shows, they'll be like, oh, you need to have an embarrassing moment or like a secret that you share with us. And I'm like, I, there are none. Just yeah. it's all already on my podcast. Yeah. I don't have any. I don't but know what to you tell guys, you. But you guys, and I, we, this kind of leans into what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I ever really understood how scary it is to be a woman. Like how, especially in what we're doing, and 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 being open and honest, how how many broken dudes there are? Right. How many absolutely broken dudes there are? Yep. And uh and and I think you know, we witness it. I, I was telling you, we witness it when when my number got doxed. Um, it it was amazing. It was an amazing and and it, and it's happening right now. It happened right now on another phone of mine. Mm -hmm. Is it started with a text? A guy saying. Hey man, dot dot dot, and it was a funny text, and okay. so I replied, "Good one." And he's like, "Oh shit, this is really Bert." And then I'm like, "Yeah, man, do me a favor, don't give out my number, but I'm glad you like the podcast." Yeah, you know, dot dot dot. You're too much of a man of the people. It's it's yeah. sweet, but it's gonna get you murdered. So, it, yeah, I really, yeah, you know, we had we had an incident like that. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, everyone's had incidents like She's that. She's almost got her head cut off the NYPD terrorism, counterterrorism. Yeah, I showed up at New York Comedy Club. I showed up to a show um, a couple of years ago, and there was eight squad cars there. And I was like, ooh, what happened at the comedy club? And they go, oh, these are for you. You have a death threat. And I had the terrorism. I had a detective from the terrorism unit assigned to me. Um, and then I had an armed guard at all the comedy clubs I performed at for that for a couple of weeks. Wait, what happened? Um people guy threatened to behead her yeah which i thought was like so with a vintage. guillotine and i'm like where are you gonna get that yeah and i'm like well i mean also if you know you're I would, definitely gonna see him coming yeah i would oh, we'll hear him. You'll hear you him. would yeah. hear it that's what i would tell audiences <laughs> and then they were more uncomfortable than me and i was like well a guillotine only takes one person at a time really yeah. so yeah. they're gonna me first you know yeah. <laughs> and it was it was a man who had been preying on multiple women in the comedy community and this is the most fucked up part about it the only reason they cared for me was there and one of the detectives told me this this is not something i thought of on my own he was like well you're like a known person so that's why we're taking it seriously as if the other women that he had been stalking weren't important, important because they didn't have an instagram following like that's insane to me and i was actually glad that it happened to me so that they would take it seriously because he was preying on so many women in the community. And it's, I was like, well, I'll, I was like, I'll handle it. He'll be sad. He'll be mad if he like approaches me. I, my mom used to call me like ransom of red chief. I yeah. don't know if you know that story, <laughs> No, but it's basically like, like a little boy who gets kidnapped and he's so fucking annoying that the kidnappers are like, you can have him back. <laughs> so that'd be me, man. <laughs> I'd be like, what are we doing? Play Monopoly. What's going on? Let's right. go fishing. I love being kidnapped. What a story. <laughs> why, why, why does, what, why do you guys, what hap what happens to a boy? What happens to a boy that turns him into that? Masculinity, I think, is a little fucked. I think oh, yeah. I think the second the second you the second a person uh, is taught by their parent figure, like you have to hide a part of yourself that that's going to blow up regardless. And that happens to everybody. But with men, I think the feelings thing and not being encouraged to feel and to express yourself and to like interrogate yourself. Really, that's the damage, I think, is 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 little boys being being raised with this idea that of what a man is. Yeah. And women as property. I think it's still kind of like this trophy thing that if you don't have a woman uh, or an attractive woman in your life, you are less of a man. And so therefore you're going to lash out at women, especially women who come off as like powerful and in charge of their sexuality. I mean, we'll see it in the YouTube comments on this episode. Hell right? yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't read comments. I, I don't read comments. I don't go on Twitter anymore. Yeah. I'm actually fully off Twitter. Nice. And I've been off Twitter uh, reading. I, I have, um, I'll have it on my computer. I don't have it on my phone. And the print's so small on my phone, I can't see it because I need oh, glasses. Perfect. So I, so I never go on Twitter. Never go on Twitter. Uh, but it's always, when you and when you stop going on Twitter, it's just positivity. Yeah. Like, it's just like, it's... Uh, when you do hop on, you're like, I, like I hopped on today to look at it to see. I, I like, I, I, oddly enough, I like the 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 explore thing. Yeah, the the, the I like the news yeah. Twitter uh, gives me. I do too. But um, I hopped on and I'll go to verified or DMs. I won't go to like 
scroll and see what's going on. Oh, okay. And that's when I say I'm off Twitter. I don't go on. I don't go and read my mentions. Yeah. I go to verified in case there's something important. And today, Whitney Whitney uh, Cummings was like, I was like, Whitney Houston, Houston came that's big news. To Bert. talk to Bert. <laughs> Whitney Cummings was like, Bert Kreischer and I are doing a show. And I was like, wait, I have no fucking recollection of this. Fuck. And so I was like, oh <laughs> my God. So, so I'm glad I went on today. But, um, <laughs> but it's funny because the, it, I wonder, and I, I'm saying from my experience, I wonder if there is a window where you don't catch the crazy and end up dating the person, and those are the guys who murder the women. So, like, oh, because yeah. like, so in my experience, and I, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what this chat thread was, but it was a guy who texted something, and I, uh, I, I'm glad you like the show or whatever, and he's like, "Oh, this is really Bert," and I, I mean, he might have called one time. And I answered, and he's like, no, no way, no way. And I was like, yeah, and then we bullshitted. And then he texts again. And then what happens inevitably is they get fucked up He one feels night. entitled to you now. He feels like he's got ownership to me. Yeah, sure. he feels like, like he has a, a little tunnel to yeah, you. Hey, man, fucking pick up your fucking phone. I'm texting you. Yep. Dude, we need to fucking party, man. I'm partying right now. Call me. And all of a sudden, you watch it spiral. And, and then I wondered, like, what if I hadn't like what if what if that was what if that guy was in my real life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if that guy was in my real life? I've actually had one experience with a guy um who I who I was nice to and I was friends with. Yeah. And then and then I, I watched him have a mental episode mm. and I went, Whoa. And I was like, that that's the danger. Yeah, people can turn Glenn close very quickly. Whew. Yeah. Just and by the way, sad. I think I have that ability also. <laughs> We all do. Like I really, like we I really do. do. Like I remember, it's really hard to tame the feelings of, of uh, getting. I got this girl, uh, I dated, and I moved to New York, and she was still living in Orlando, and I, and 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 this is the crazy is like, I was like, I'm gonna surprise her. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly to Orlando. My buddy Eddie lived there, and you were boyfriend girlfriend. We were boyfriend. Okay, girlfriend. so yeah, that's yeah, we were yeah, boyfriend that's, girlfriend. That's sweet. I've yeah. done that. Yeah. And I showed up at her house, and she was getting dressed to go out. And and she went crazy on me. She's like, "You have no right to come here." Oh, and I was like, "Hold on, what? whoa, I'm your boyfriend." And I realized at that moment she was going out on a date. Nice. And, and she was. <laughs> You're not her boyfriend. And and that she was Important cheating on me. Oh, and that <laughs> that's why she was so mad. I love that she's like, "You have no right." And I was like, I'm busy I, in my head, I was you. like, "I wanted to say I pay the rent here, but I didn't." <laughs> you know, I wanted to say. <laughs> And what's so crazy is it was a screen door. Like I was, there were so many <laughs> things about this that were so off. You were talking yeah. to her through a yeah, screen door. I was talking to her through a screen door. I was like, "Hey," and she was like, "What the, what the fuck are you doing here?" And I was like, "I'm came to surprise, surprise. you." <laughs> she was like, "You have no right to be here." And I was like, "Yeah, that's was, not yeah. the sound of a happy spouse." <laughs> and so I had to go to my buddy Eddie's house, and damn, and I um, I was like, "It's." Were there cell phones during this time? Did you have a cell phone? No, no, so no, no. how, how did you get to Eddie's? Like, what did you do? Eddie picked me up at the airport. Okay. He wrote Eddie a letter Eddie and then he waited for Eddie the postman to, to deliver off. it. And so. so he went to drop me off. And then, uh, and then Eddie was, I was like, D don't leave. <laughs> and then I got back in the car with Eddie and I just stayed at his house. And I was oh, like, I was wow. like, cool. This is literally probably a month before cell phones. No joke. What? Because I remember, I remember <laughs> after that, so I moved, I flew back to New York. It's so funny you say that. I moved back to New York. I, I went back to New York that weekend. I stayed at Eddie's house with the Dacre brothers. And <laughs> and you need, you need, sadly, you need broken men to help mend those broken men feelings. Sometimes, yeah. S sad, by the way, not not calling the Dacre brothers broken men, but the Dacre brothers and Eddie, we were all broken men at, at one point. <laughs> and uh, I moved back to New York and I decided, and I had the gross feeling of like, I want to call her. I want to, I should fly back there. I should, <laughs> like, you know, like all these gross feelings and you, yeah. their, their thoughts. The ur their urges, they're very powerful urges. And I. But what did you want the outcome to be? I like wanted you, her to be my girlfriend. Even I though wanted, she had even deceived though, you? Yeah, I was like, I wanted, I, I wanted her to take me back. I wanted her to. Stop cheating on you? Yeah, or yes, I don't know. <laughs> I bet, I'd Small been, ass. I've been cheated a couple on a couple times, and it oh the, that feeling it hurts. It, it it and it'll make you do insane things. It'll yeah. make you think insane things, and it'll open you to a part of your brain that you're like didn't know this was there. But getting but cheated been on there the whole time. It, it, it's it's a reflection of the person who's cheating on you. It's not a reflection. But if it on happens you. to you a bunch of times, you're like, I mean, I'm the common denominator. It happened to me. 
twice. Okay, that's not bad. And then back to back, and and I was the common denominator. Right. I was, I was not. I don't think I was healthy in the way I approach relationships. Mm. I also did. I. It's funny the 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 way I got out of it is I was in I lived across the street from the comedy cellar. Okay. On McDougal Street. Oh wow, the loudest street in New York. Yes. Great spot. And I called my dad and I said, uh, "Would you?" I want to build a loft because I was living on a couch. I said, I want to build a loft. And I think that'll get my mind off this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you um, would you lend me money to buy lum- lumber to build a loft? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I and I said, we're not going to talk to the, we're not going to answer the phone. We're not going to look at the phone. And I put the phone on my balcony, on my, on my catwalk. <laughs> I put the phone out there and I said, it's out there. I'm not doing it. And then she called as I was building the loft oh. and I went, in a weird way i went if i in like a tra- if i stay on the treadmill for five more minutes i'll be stronger mm-hmm, i mm-hmm. said if i don't answer it i bet i'm stronger right yeah yes and i and i didn't answer it and i built the loft and after i built the loft uh my mom came up and she bought me a cell phone Aww. she bought me the first she bought me the first uh nokia brick nice oh, yeah, my buddy tony hernandez got one the next day i mean it was like it was <laughs> like we other? all got the bit and, and we just got all, all got cell phones and I didn't put the girl's number in the cell phone. Nice. That's a smart move. And she, so energetically, you start. Yeah, and that you, drives you re, them crazy. You when you like, when you just decide, I don't want you yep. back. I'm not communicating with you anymore. Even even if in your heart you do. Well, want it, back. It, for, from emotionally tumultuous situations, there's this author that I'm obsessed with. His name is Michael Singer. He wrote The Untethered Soul, one of my favorite books. It's like the book I've been searching for my whole Wait, life. What is it? What is it about? Uh, it, it's just about how to live. It's about how to live and your heart and the human. The human heart is is a is a is an orchestra and it's capable of so many emotions and the, the gamut of human emotions could be so fucking intense. And when you're in these, like that situation with that girl, it, it, and so you're trying to figure out how am I going to deal with this? How do I want, what's the way out of this? And he described, he's like, it's like a t- you're, you're playing tug of war with these hard feelings. And it, you, you think that you have to push them away or get them out of your life or, or, or attack them. But really all you have to do is you're in a tug of war with them. You just relax your hands and you let go of the rope. That's it. It's actually yeah. very easy. So that moment where you're like, she, if you saw the phone ring or whatever, you're like, I'm not going to answer it. That's you let go into the rope. And then automatically you're lighter. And then one day I was at the <laughs> Chevron on the corner of West Third and La Cienega. <laughs> and she called me. Yeah. Uh-uh. Wait, how'd uh, she get your number? She c- called my cell phone. I, I didn't know who it was. I answered it. And I said, hello. And she said, hey, I, I, I got your number. I'm in L.A. And I was like, huh? And she was like, yeah, whatever. Called Eddie or something. I got your number. I'm in LA. I want to hang out, and I was in LA working with Will Smith, and I went, "Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have any time. I'm sorry." Nice. And I hung up on her, and well, did it? And was I it remember, a hard I, thing? Was I it remember, a hard decision? I, I, no, not at good, all. Good, good. And I was, I remember sitting, uh, I remember sitting. God, but, but this is so crazy that I'm connecting. I think this is the day Payne Stewart died. Wow. Yeah, and so because I w- I was going to there was a hotel right there that this girl that I knew was staying at. And I remember just being like, hey, I don't care. Yeah. Isn't that the like, best? I don't, oh, it's amazing. I don't I'm care. Free. Like, and I was like, that's amazing that, what's the, what's the hardest you got your heart broke? <sighs> Jesus. You got a while. How many times we got your heart broke first? <sighs> Let's do the math. I For fall in too. love with people I have no business falling in love with. So just do me, give me the ages and like, Two, I mean, the, the the biggest heartbreak of us, you know, so far romantically is the impetus for guys we fucked. Yeah. And it's so interesting <laughs> to go back and think about that guy and like look at him and his wife and his kid and be like, I'm so happy that he's happy. And this is not at all the life I wanted. And yeah. man, am I happy that we're not together anymore. Yeah. And so that was how old was I at that time? You were 27. So, yeah. You ever see your friend go through a breakup where you're like, Oh, so, so you gotta was, like check on them. Like that, that was, was the impetus of for guys we fought. Yeah, I got yeah. dumped in a Panera bread by who I thought was the love of my life. And this is a person who like I went to Israel on birthright and he wrote me a letter every day because he missed me so much. It's Which 14 days, you know. It's yeah. like yeah. this is someone who told me like I'm the one. Like this, it's so I think the hardest kind of breakup is, you know, usually in a relationship, one person likes another the other person a tad more, yeah. you yeah. know? And, and so it, and it switches me and throughout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it ebbs and flows, though it switches. Sometimes yeah. you like her more, sometimes she's like, she likes you yeah, more. Yeah, and so then to have someone- Nope, nope, it doesn't switch, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and so to have someone like you more the whole time, and then for kind of really quickly for that to turn, and then make me like, 
it made me obsessed with him for like a good year because it's like, why did you take that like love away from me so quickly? And in retrospect, I'm like, I don't even know that it was him that I missed. It was just like, I didn't like that something positive had been ripped from me so abruptly. It felt like I was felt so out of control. Yeah. It's, it's, It's unfair. It's un- there's an unfairness to life sometimes where you go, hold on, oh, yeah. this isn't what I signed up for. Oh my like, gosh. This isn't, and yep. then there's a, there's like, in New York, sucks, heartbreak sucks in New York. Heartbreak in New York is like it's, a double, it's like double heartbreak. It's because you get to see so many people having good times and they're all walking around like, eh, and I'm like, what the fuck are you smiling about? <laughs> yeah, and a fucking cab like splashes you and you're like, yeah. ah! Someone laughs and you want to like just stab them in the face. Yeah. So then, so then that heartbreak started the podcast. I don't. Yeah, because we were already spir- the spiral of the heartache. Yeah, I couldn't. I, it bothered me so much that I was so out of control with my feelings, and it scared me that someone could hurt me this badly, change my mood this badly. Because I'm someone who really feels good about themselves, loves myself, always have. And I was like, I this is I can't walk around like with the possibility of this ever happening to me again. So I was like, this is an unsafe situation for me to be in. And so I talked to Christine and I was like, I think we should go and interview uh, all the men that we've had relationships with because I approach everything like a student. And I was like, I'm going to learn a research project, how to be a better girlfriend so that this can't happen again, which of course is not possible. You know, you can improve yourself. No, no. So, so when I, after that girl, I said there's there's one and there's one thing that's a common denominator and that's me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm not operating right. I'm yeah. not operating right. I was and sadly, sadly, and I say this to anyone listening who's a, a, a young father, that will rear its head again. That that thing you didn't like about yourself rears its head again with your daughters. Mm. It and and that is what I've noticed is those same gross feelings of neediness of like I is happening with me and my daughters because I Oh, I start going like, oh, because they're they're they grow up and they sure. want their own space, and then one day, <laughs> one day you're sitting in a fucking airplane crying, going, "This sounds fucking disgusting," but like going, "I was the guy for her, like I was her, I was her every that doesn't day." Sound disgusting. I was her every day, and now right, and like you were the light of her life. Yeah, you were the and, man in her life. And then yeah. and now and now they're looking for something that I was. I was the guy. Like yeah. I fucking did everything. Yeah, I get up and get coffee. I get up and get donuts. You tell me what you want. I'll get it. Right. And but because you were a good guy, they're probably going to go out and look for a good guy. Well, I think they're going to end up fucking dr- attracting needy, broken dudes because I'm needy, Perhaps. broken. But, but if you give them the heads up, maybe so, they'll, you know, have a seed planted. So that girl, I remember saying, I'm not going to date a girl. I was like, I'm I'm not, I'm not right. Yeah. And I'm not right. I, the person I am today is, does not want to meet the person I don't want to date the person that would date me is how I thought. So many people oh. feel that way. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I don't like me. So many guys. I think that I don't know that. I don't know a lot of women that think that, but a lot of men are like, but that's how I get my heart broken. Cause I'll fall for a guy. And they, they like, basically are like, you're too good. I don't like that. You like, like, I don't like mm-hmm. myself. So yeah. the fact that you like me and you like got stuff going on for yourself. I don't like that. I'm like, can you just give up and just give in <laughs> and love me? Wait, it's, well, but, that's so funny because I definitely felt so that frustrating. way. frustrating. And I, I just let me love you and you love me and it'll be great. See, so when someone doesn't love me, I'm so turned off by them. I'm like, oh, you don't like me. What is wrong with bad you? T- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Corinne has it right. She's like, oh, you have bad taste. See ya. Well, because a lot of people <laughs> thought it was like narcissistic that um, one of the things that would get me interested in a guy was when he showed interest in me. And so I ran it by my therapist and she goes, yeah, no, that's a smart move because you like you. And so someone showing interest in you, you respond to that. She's like, mo- the, like what most people do is respond to people who pull away from them or don't like them. But I'm like, why, why would I do that? It's just, right. it, it doesn't make sense in my brain when people are chasing after people you who don't, like don't being, want them. Uh, mentally athletic? Yeah, it just doesn't. I go, but but why? you you want? I want someone who's like so enthusiastic about being with me. I don't want you to text me all the time. That drives yeah. me crazy. I get smothered so easily. But I want you to like think I'm the best person in the world. We all deserve that. Well, some of us deserve that. I have some exes who don't, but. I Yeah, it's, it's funny because I, I kind of need you to not like me a little bit. Uh, At the beginning or the whole time? I've the played this all time. wrong, Bert. Damn, I, Bert. Like, I just, Leanne, what is that about? <laughs> I don't know, Leanne. Leanne, Leanne loves me, but I can but tell I she's, so. 
I can tell she's not. You said that so casually. She loves me. You know, we built like, a home and a life together. But she's not. I mean, I, I think. I think. That's so funny. I think I would be more devastated without her than she would be without me. Perhaps. Without a, a lot doubt. of straight couples. That's without usually without a fucking doubt. <laughs> because I'm gone so much, right. she's already accustomed to it. Right. Um. Whereas. Whereas I. I, I mean. The only time I've never, the only thing, I've never seen her jealous ever, ever. But I was toying with the idea of getting a muse for the bus, like hiring a muse. Like a human? Yeah, human muse. Like find a muse. How do you, yeah. Julia Fox. Yeah. She's available that now. Was, it was because of Julia Fox. She was an Fox <laughs> She said that thing and, and I was like, I was like, uh, muses are real. Sure. And, and I was like. I wonder if I could just put out an application for a muse, get a bus muse for a week, just as it'll be. By, by the way, bus in all, muse. in all, in all a honesty, bus muse, bus and muse. Never thought. That was so does it have to be a hot woman? It could be. Of course, okay. of course, yeah. Well, hold on. So wait, so okay. wait, here's the. So like, first and foremost, I was never doing it. I was only doing it for content. I thought it'll be make great content. It would yeah. make great and, content. And, and, and I think. I think people would be interested in. And you're likable that- enough to do it because a, a lot of guys like if there are I'm not going to name names on the show, but there are a lot of comedians who if they were like, I'm getting a bus muse. I'm like, you're about to get yeah, arrested. A wi- yeah, a yeah. woman's a woman's <laughs> ah, danger alert would go yeah, off. Yeah, but, but you, you could yeah. do it. You are the rare person that could pull that off. So I wanted like a like a like think um, Kate Hudson in uh, in in almost famous. Almost famous. Yeah. I want a flighty, fun, blonde. <laughs> Joint rolling, yeah. Um, what's a cocktail like that yeah, kind of I, yeah. the, oh, on the bus, right? <laughs> oh my god, and what a fun job! That just would be. see, yeah, I was give her a thousand bucks a week, That's and amazing. you know, it's good money. It's good money for just hanging out in a bus and partying. Right. She can't, she can't hook up with anyone. She can't like. It's got to be. She's got to be muse. positive energy. It's well, it's, yeah. well, it's everyone's muse. Oh, right. it's everyone's. Yeah, muse. let her be everyone's muse. Oh, and, why does it got to be a gal? Because uh, who the fuck wants a dude? Like, what are we gonna have some dude <laughs> just? I mean, by the way, I do have a couple dude muses <laughs> in my life. You but do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my cousin Andrew's a muse. Nice. Like, I mean, he's but he's just a, he's just a guy that he think I like the way he thinks. Yeah. So that, that but yeah. It, but the the concept of a muse is they inspire you, of course. And it's it's just like a it's like a clean glass of water. So yeah. And and so I ran up by Leanne, and she was actually offended. Good. <laughs> she was like she was like no my my sister. Got upset. My mom got upset. Oh, wow. Yeah, my sister goes, how How would you feel if someone hired Georgia to be a bus muse? And I was like, oh, that would bother <laughs> That's me. That's a great way to put it. That's a yeah. great way to get sma- snap your perspective. <laughs> yeah. But it's unfortunate, though, like because that's such a common thing that you have to think of a woman as your daughter or your wife or your mom to put them into perspective. And men need to be able to like see the full picture without it being someone who's oh, really closely related to them. Oh, they're like, a I, person. They're a human. Yeah, like I hate when people are like, I'm a girl dad, so I get it. It's like, how about you're a human being so you understand empathy? Yeah. How yeah. about that? Yeah. 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 I'm a yeah. girl dad. I've I've seen that on fucking live. That, that's always weird. Every yeah. it's like a girl that it's like saying I'm a male feminist, and then it's like okay, yeah, no, and then we'll see right in a police that. blotter that you yeah. sexually assaulted someone next. Yeah. Man, are you, red flag. I, there, the one thing I love about the internet is the comeuppance of it. <laughs> the the uh, what was there was the the, and I don't mean to I don't mean to slam this dude. I don't know this dude, not, but the one guy that put the toenail in his McDonald's, and what? then and then. And then, and then, like, like I don't know. What I, think he's a, I think he's a comic. Like, he got like a he got like an order, and I don't know. I don't know that. Found a fingernail in it. Okay. And then he went viral, and <laughs> and it, everyone's huh? like, everyone's like, and he was like, he was like, and then all the women were like, oh, he's a spouse. He's an abuser. Oh, <laughs> and, 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 that is it. Box of cereal. He found a toenail in a food item. He found like a finger How'd in a go- box of cereal, <laughs> and ev- and then everyone's like, everyone's like, you mean this guy, the guy that beats up women, or I don't know what he does. Allegedly, I don't know. Right. But, like, I, the, but there's like the the crazy thing. Here you go. a shrimp. He found a shrimp. Oh, I know the story you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, I know the story you're talking about. I didn't know he was an abuser. No, it, well, it's but no, but it's that's the crazy thing about the internet. Is They'll take you, you down, man. You get, you get a little bit of momentum, and they're like, "Oh, we we didn't mind taking you down." Yeah, we're gonna stop that right now. 
I don't want to say his name because I know he. I don't know if he did anything or if he. Didn't. Yeah, it's all speculation. It's all speculation, or I'm maybe not. I, I mean, right. But uh, but that's the crazy thing about the fucking internet is that uh, this little it, it, they they have no problem correcting themselves, and t- it's like the fucking. That's why I don't say anything about anything. Yeah. When you say male male feminist, I just I nod my head and I go, I listen. Like, <laughs> and I've gotten in trouble for listening. You got. <laughs> No way. You I'm, never get in trouble for listening. No, we've gotten in trouble for like, uh, but I know we, like, there's instances when like people will get mad that like, they're like, why didn't you stand up when someone said well, sometimes, that? Sometimes, sometimes I don't. We've had like Robert Kelly on and he like, you know, just like saying, you know, like a lot of male comics would like say things. And I'm like, I am not going to be a person who's going to overcorrect every single word yeah. out of your yeah. mouth. Oh. That's annoying. Also, That's not the way to live. That's not helping anybody. Yeah. It's I, obnoxious. I I, I, I had uh, uh, Ashling B on my podcast. It's one most people bring up to me. Okay. And it was right at the Me Too movement, right at the beginning of it. And she wanted to talk about the disparity between female comics and male comics at the comedy store yeah. and i and i first of all i don't have any stats i don't have any like i don't know i don't have lineups in front of me i can't judge it sure and i didn't speak up all the men hated me and then all the women that work at the comedy store that have rightfully earned the opportunity to work at the comedy store were angry that someone wanted to take something they had worked for it was like fucking the when people start show. listening to you, you are responsible for their feelings. It's almost like like yeah. you're responsible for defending them. You're responsible for making them feel any way that they want. And it's it is exhausting. And you have to continue to be the version of yourself that they fell in love with, which kind of stunts your growth a bit, you know, yeah. or a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, the, I, you know, it's so funny. I've been so many versions of myself. I don't even know who I am anymore. <laughs> Well, I imagine people want like you gotta shirt go the off, woods. drinking, pouring vodka on yourself, Bert, yeah. you know. I mean, that I that happened to David Tell too, and he doesn't even drink anymore. And so many people knew him as like insomniac David Tell yeah. going out partying. And you still see when he's out that side the cellar, people will still come up to him and expect him to be that version of himself. But it, like he's in his fifties, it would be sad if he was that version of himself. Yeah, well, so. I'm, I'm turning fifty the next year. I know the, the feelings. Yeah, there's the same. <laughs> the human brain likes the human brain likes going. Oh, I know that. Like. It likes recognizing things so uh, and making associations so it's like if you're the guy with the with the glass of beer that takes a shirt off that tells the great story at the party then that's what i want you to be if i see yeah. it like that and then the human brain is just very kind of narrow-minded in that way this podcast is sponsored by better help online therapy uh, i'm in therapy i've been in therapy for a very long time look relationships take work everything takes work in life but sometimes you don't think about yourself you should get the same treatment you'd give to other people if you were in a relationship. If you were in a relationship and they were like, hey, I'm kind of hungry, you'd be like, oh, let me go grab your food. Why wouldn't you do that with yourself? Well, you work out, right? You take care of your, your health. You brush your teeth. I put in Rogaine. Therapy should be part of that list. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship. That's the one you have with yourself. God dang it, that's so important. Whether it's hitting the gym, making time for a haircut, or even trying therapy, you are, the great, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. Um, I have been in therapy. I love online therapy. For me, and I'll, we'll talk about this in a second, is I don't have to get in a car. I can do it on the phone. And that's what BetterHelp is fantastic at. I love to get on a phone, get on a treadmill, feel like I'm killing two birds with one stone. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and BertCast listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Bert. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Bert. If you're like me, you've been on a weight loss journey for a while now. We're often faced with difficult decisions every day. We want to make the best choices for our health, but it isn't always easy. Noom Weight gives you the support and knowledge you need to make positive choices, even when it's difficult. By learning the psychology behind your habits and better understanding your relationship with food, you'll gain the wisdom you'll need to continue making long-term positive changes. Noom understands that everyone's weight loss journey is unique, and that is very true. What works for some people doesn't work for everyone. It doesn't may not work for you. That's why Noom Weight uses psychology-based approach that adapts to your lifestyle. It's flexible approach focused on progress, not perfection, and allows you to work towards your goals at a pace that is comfortable for you. 
I'll tell you what, I love Noom because it makes building great habits sustainable for me. And, and I am not a guy with great habits. Noom Weight makes it easy to start your weight loss journey and stay on track. Noom's personalized lessons help you gain confidence with practical knowledge you can employ right away. With one-on-one -on -one coaching, you will always have the guidance and support on your journey. Noom's weight cognitive behavioral approach, that is the best way to learn things is through CBT. Co cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive behavioral approach teaches you how to learn how to be more mindful of your habits and gives you the knowledge you need to continue building long-term positive habits. 75% of Noom's weight users finish the program and more than 60% of the users engaged with the program keep the weight off for a year or more. You worried about having an off day? An off day is okay. It won't impede your progress. Noom will help you get back on track. Remember, progress, not perfection. There's no need to worry about fitting Noom into your schedule. All you need is just 5, 10, 15 minutes a day. And how much time you want to spend is entirely up to you. Start building better habits for a healthier long-term results. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash birdcast. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash birdcast. We got very lucky, I think, because of our association with Joe that and Joe's so against that branding that you could we I got I am very different versions of myself, a lot of different versions of myself. But it's it's funny. I, I like at this, this point in my life, I go, I am not really sure what I want to be. Like right. I, I, I toy with not drinking a lot. Yeah, I mean a yeah. lot, but it it's not it's not because I don't like it. Like I love it. I well, still I don't think anyone so what, what, stops why drinking it? because they don't like it. I think they like they don't like who they become on it, or it's become I like who I am. It becomes overwhelming. Like, like, so, so why what makes time out of your day? What makes no, you want to stop? Healthy. Healthy. It doesn't just, take any time just, out of your day. It doesn't day. take any time out of my day. It actually adds. I, I like. Are you a good, like a functioning hard, drink? Beyond functioning. Okay. So I wake up. So if I drink, I wake up with a fire lit under my ass to get shit done. Whoa. Damn, I, I would start drinking if, excessively. Yeah, Jesus. If I don't drink, I wake up going, I feel pretty good. Whoa, wow. I never heard of that. Okay, well, that's something that yeah. maybe doesn't maybe, sound healthy. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> right. Maybe, yeah. I'm like, is your body like And then using... all of a sudden, I'm, I'm out and I'm having a cup of coffee and I'm like looking at the sun. I'm like, I'm going to go through some gratitudes. And then, that's nice. but if I wake up, I wake up hungover or like a little bit hungover. Well, have... is it the anxious pit that gets you going? Oh, it's, 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 uh, yeah. hey, buddy, we got a finite time on this planet. What the fuck are we doing laying in bed? Uh, get out. You're not, you don't, you haven't earned the right to lay in bed. Get out of bed. Go, go find the things that make you happy and start doing them right wow, now. Hungover you is like you an know? Oprah boss. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so, well, it's, I was just talking to someone about this the other day. <clears throat> I don't mind myself not drinking. I, I'm, I mean, I feel good and I feel, I, I, I don't eat that well when I'm not drinking. Okay. Um, I don't. Like when, you so, eat well, better drinking, when you're drinking. Drinking does a lot, has drinking. a lot of benefits. Interesting. If, when I'm drinking, I, I, I'm very punitive. Is the word my therapist says. Okay. So, um, so right now, uh, I'm fasting. So I, I'll fast until probably probably three in the afternoon because I drank last night. Okay. I, I, I'm, I, if I wasn't fat, if I if I hadn't drank last night, I would have had a breakfast sandwich with Leanne. Wow. I, she went to make a breakfast sandwich, and I I said to myself, mm. I haven't earned that. Huh? Earn, yeah. That stress earned that. That's like a. Is that a, does that stress you out to think that way or no? no I think that I, it's way, so for normal sure. for my brain. Okay. Like I, so when I'm drinking, I look at people eating ice cream as if they are the weakest human beings alive. <laughs> That's so funny. When I see you what eating ice cream, I go, I, I I turn into my dad where I go. I was gonna what? say, where's this coming from? Are you judging? Are you projecting? I'm sure it's my dad. But my um, it's. I, I go. Uh, I go. I remember seeing a guy eating an ice cream cone. I go, who the fuck raised you? Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Like, and and so- and Ice cream isn't even that bad for it's, you. It's, but if I'm not drinking, I <laughs> love ice cream. I love ice cream. Because wow. I, I can allow it, because I go, oh, I would have had a thousand calories in booze tonight. I can have an ice cream cone. Right, right, right. No, right. I can have, I, 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 I like, I love, I love root beer. Oh, I yeah, love it's great. root beer. Maybe my favorite thing in the world. Yeah, so I does will my not, vice root, in general. Root beer is so good. If I'm not drinking, I will never have a fucking root beer. You will never see me. If I'm drinking, I will never have a root beer. If I'm not drinking, well, what? And the I'll mindset is I'll, I'll have root beer. I'll have cream soda. I love cream soda. Yeah. It's because I go, I feel like I, 
drinking takes up so many calories that I'm willing to allow it that I need to, if I got that, then I got to, I got to be the other side and, and it kind of offsets it. So when we would do sober October, I would never lose weight because I enjoyed life. I would just be like, I was like, it's like I, a little kid in you comes yeah, out. To I'd play be like, oh, I wouldn't drinking. mind McDonald's. I never get to eat McDonald's. Right. I'm, I'm, I'll fuck up McDonald's. But like the other night, the other night we were at the at a truck stop, and I said to my tour manager, I was I was drunk, and I said, uh, I and she said, and we were trying, I'm trying to lose weight, and she was like, and I said, go buy ten. If you buy ten cheeseburgers right now, I won't eat them. But I need you to buy them. If you don't buy them. I will go buy them. I need you to buy them and I'm going to bed. And she goes, I'll buy them if you go to bed. It's so weird. Like, what is know, this? Know, Wait, is, it, is it control if... involved? This is fascinating. Oh, it's, it's it's control. A, What's your dad do? Do you He's talk about lawyer. this? Oh, my okay. dad's in town right now. So that's why a lot of this is. Well, can I ask, like, what was, the, what was the oh, yeah. dynamic that you were raised with? Like, what kind of. <laughs> you you explained it at the beginning. Don't have feelings. Don't feel. Don't uh, like that. Okay. Yeah. Don't. Uh, don't feel my no there feelings was are weak i never i never was and, and i mean this respectfully I, I, for my parents well i never had like to talk about the birds and the bees yeah i never had to talk about yeah. girls i never had to talk about like like i had to learn that all on my own were you nurtured in terms of your mind was your mind nurtured i think a lot of people don't get this so i was nurtured so. physically meaning like so food hugged? and water yeah. no, <laughs> no 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 I, I was hugged my i would kiss my parents okay. on the cheek or my, maybe i i think on the oh, lips I'm, I'm sure i did i, I mean I, I never i never remember when we got georgia i not got her but had her. <laughs> we went to the store remember, we rescued georgia <laughs> i was like i was like is it okay to kiss from the a baby on the lips and my little sister was like yeah we were kissed on the lips our whole lives yeah and so i was like okay i just wanted to check yeah but um physically meaning i was an outdoor kid i was a very outdoor kid go out nice and i was in a speedo until i was 12 I was, then that's all I'd wear. I'd go outside, be on a bike on a Speedo, be in the lake in a Speedo, Fun. play yeah, baseball in a Speedo. Yeah. And so I was an outdoor kid. But as far as like feelings go, yeah, I don't think, I remember when I got dumped in eighth grade and got my heart broke for the first time. I remember crying, but crying as if I was throwing up. At, but you know what Ipecac is? It's a, it's yep. a thing. It was almost like I had taken Ipecac and I was crying and I didn't know why it was happening and I didn't know what was happening in my heart. And I was like, wait, what the, f what the fuck is this? Like, oh my God, it's something's strong. happening to me. Like, does this mean I'm gay? Like, why am I crying like this? Oh, like, does this mean I'm gay? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that's oh. an interesting go-to. Every, there was a, I, I was homophobic growing up, but not afraid of other gay men, afraid I was gay. Right. Like that that's was my big fear was like. Yeah, that's like, a common thing with masculinity, the way it fucks you up. It, it, yeah. it's, it, somehow it's like, well, if you like another man, that's not masculine. I, well, I, was, I remember masturbating for the first time and being like, fuck, man, I guess I'm gay. Like, <laughs> Jesus you Christ. touched a penis? Because I touched my own. I was like, yeah. and I really liked it. And I was like, well, I, I, mean, I can't deny who I am. Right. And so, and then when I found out other dudes did it, it was like, Everyone's gay. I was like, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? Yeah. I've been holding this you secret. You were stressed That's out so about funny. jerking off or so. I thought I was going, when I masturbated, I masturbated a lot as a kid and I thought I was going to, I was like, today's the day I'm going to find out I'm pregnant. Like, oh my any, God. Any day now I'm going to have to tell my mom that I'm pregnant because I'm masturbating. I, it, yeah. I, I, knew, I had no, I, that was, nothing was ever openly talked about in my family. So I went, I mean, I, I, how'd your I, dad handle that heartache for you? What heartache? He didn't ever, nothing. You I just never, cried in your room alone? I cried, cried in the bathroom. I went to the bathroom yeah. so that no Oh, you didn't one, talk to your parents about it? Nope. I wouldn't okay. talk to my parents about that no. either. I'm like, it's like a secret room cry. Yeah. Also, yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like parents, because like they, they're too old to under, it's almost like they're too old to understand because they know it won't matter in a couple of years. That's how my parents probably would handle it anyway. They would yeah. just be like, what are you talking about? Like, this my is mom, ridiculous. You could talk to my mom. My dad was, my dad. I don't. I mean, not not in a bad way, but I just wasn't like my dad lost his dad when he was thirteen. Yeah, okay. and there was a lot of like my dad now is kind of, you know, you, you can't say the wrong thing around him. He might start crying thinking about his dad or yeah. like, oh okay. Yeah. So well, he, as men get older, they get more estrogen, and women get more testosterone as we get older. That's why women get hornier and men get uh, more emotional. That makes total sense with everything I'm going through these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. You didn't know that? No, I, I've yeah. been crying ever since I did the movie. I can cry very easily yeah your heart's open oh i'm not sure i like that it's un it's uncomfortable i remember when testosterone was throbbing through me i yeah. fucking loved it i loved testosterone 
I loved Why? it. Are you still horny? Yeah. Okay, well, that's <laughs> that's there. Yeah. What did you love about testosterone? Um, oh, <laughs> I loved feeling my arm. I loved, I loved, <laughs> it would, it, testosterone, I remember I was my peak testosterone when I was in college. That, that's when I remember, I, I would just, I fucking, and I remember one day just going like, uh, I was walking through Indian Village and I had lifted weights at the at the at the at the school and i'd walked home and i started jogging and i felt good and i remember walking into india village down by where miles and them lived i'm saying this to, like as if someone knows and i remember feeling my arm going fuck yeah i love being a man yeah I was like, my yeah, arms are yeah. fucking big right now and i had to go to an english class and i threw on a shirt and i was like oh they're fuck and i remember sitting in class going like i love being a dude like i love it that's like, adorable it was the that's weirdest good. I, I remember that and now that women I'm, have that moment all the like women i i think as a, like i have that moment all the time i'm like oh look at good for you girl. I, yeah i, I yes. like put on uh, those like, curves helen ready i am woman hear me roar the other day and i was just like i fucking love being a woman yeah this it's pretty is sick. great oh i would be i don't think i'd enjoy being a woman i would be I I would get myself into a lot of bad situations. I get myself into bad situations. I was like, you get yourself into bad situations. I I can't imagine if I was a fucking chick. Right. Because when you're a woman and and the people treat you a certain way, if they want to have sex with you, so that power dynamic is whoa. I would be the. You learn to manage that from the time you're 12. I would be the overweight liberal chick with purple hair screaming at Ben Shapiro, going, (laughs) no! That's who you would be? That's who I'd be. That's who I'd be. Because I would be out of, I would, I would not be in control of myself. I would, I would, I'd be a fucking. <laughs> well, I mean, no one likes that girl. <laughs> yeah. Like, poor girl. I want to just hug her and go yeah. like. Yeah. You should like, hug the little boy in you. I can't. Why? Fuck that kid. <laughs> Whoa, there we go. That's, that, we're getting that, somewhere. That kid. Fuck that kid. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. What Why? What did he need that he didn't get? I don't know. Just everything. I think he was just like, I, by the way, I watch him peek his head out at sometimes. And when I'm you're like, not drinking, probably no. it sounds well. It's, oh no! Oh, I watched him peek his head out on a podcast yesterday. You're very playful, watched, which is cool. I watched yeah. him peek his head out last night. How did it feel? Does it feel oh, like I, it? I, I, I struggle. Shut the fuck up! What are you doing? Like I like, I don't. Yeah. What does he say? Like so, how does he emerge? He just tells you everything. <laughs> <laughs> he just he, wants to be. Uh, he just, why? He wants you to connect? like him. He wants you to like oh, him. Yeah, I want to be loved. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and I yeah. and I, like I look at like. Like when Segura goes to do a podcast, he doesn't speak. Like he just doesn't talk. He just goes, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not shitting on him. I'm being very honest. Right. Yeah. Like you go watch him on Rogan. He just sits there and he'll go, yeah. Oh, he talked on yeah. ours. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I think we directly asked him questions. Yeah. So he we, had an We drove the conversation. And so, yeah. and so like he, like he just, he just is very comfortable in silence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a very, and it, but it doesn't make him uncomfortable. He just sits there and I'm very, the little boy is, it's just very uncomfortable is it, is it because uh when you sit still like bad things happen that kind of thing i don't know i think it's just i don't know the, look i was a very broken little boy like like my first day of first grade i cried the full first day from beginning to end what does that mean you're broken and well, it's just like i have separation issues i i was terrified the of attachment tornadoes issues. me too like, i was tornadoes? Like, I mean, tornadoes are scary where were, where were you in first grade in in, in uh LA. <laughs> in, ta- in Tampa, oh. I was in Tampa. Oh, they have tornadoes. Okay. And like, and, and like, and like, and like, chaos was always right around the corner. Like, it was like, it was always like you had an impending doom and like anxiety. a dog was going to attack you, or lightning was going to strike you, or like it just seemed like it. Everything was so goddamn unpredictable when I was a kid. Wow, yeah. like it's we, a lot we, for your nervous system. So I your remember, nervous system was shot. Oh yeah, just walking down the street and this kid going, "Hey man, can I show you a magic trick?" And we're like, "Yeah," and like. 30 seconds later, he's on fire. And then I'm like, fuck. What the like, fuck? That's what? how, that was Florida, I think. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I was like, I don't. Florida's <laughs> wild, man. It's a weird experience. That is yeah. a weird experience. You didn't have any safety and comfort for long periods of time? You didn't experience it? I mean, I, I'm sure I was very safe, you know, but like, I remember, uh, it's just, it was just like, I remember the, it just being a little chaotic. Like, yeah. the outdoors, not my family. Yeah. But once you go outdoors, it's like, I was the youngest kid in our neighborhood, and it was a very redneck, very white trash neighborhood. Oh, yeah, I grew up in that environment. That, that can be, you can see some freaky shit, man. Yeah. Oh, you see kids doing adult shit, and you're like, mm, I don't like this. 
Well, and if your home life also, if your home life, because I have this, I had a very stable home life. So the world to me, especially being a comedian and stuff, it feels overwhelmingly chaotic a lot. Like some, I'm like sitting at tables, hearing people tell stories and I just go, what the fuck is going on? Like, who am I surrounded by? This yeah. is so unsafe. I don't know why I'm here. Like, yeah. I just want to go home. This is awful to be around because like my, I think a lot of times people are like, trying to change who they are and get to this version of themselves that they want to be. But I'm like, I am the version of myself I want to be. And I constantly am walking around trying to protect it because I, I feel like this business takes it away from me or people try to take it away from me or change who I am or question who I am. And so it's just like constantly like trying to wrap myself in my own energy so no one can penetrate it. It's funny. I feel like sometimes the business looks at me and tells me who I am and I go, yes. oh, that's who I am. That oh, too. no. Like, and I go, well, because I don't want to let people down. Yeah, so like, so I So, like, you. if I go yeah. on a podcast and they're like, uh, hey, we got Tito's for you, I'll be like, oh, okay. And then, and then I'm, but I'll be like, I'm not even fucking drinking right now, but I'll just yeah. drink. So, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Your knee jerk is never to go, wait, consult yourself. Be My careful. That's is, what Chris Farley did. And he's dead yeah. now. No, but so. yeah, but I, I don't have. I think he had a little more than that. No, yeah, for sure. But yeah. I think like in in the SNL book, he does talk about like not wanting to let people down. He would go to parties. People would want him to be that version of himself yeah. because it's so fun. It's so exciting. But like sometimes you just have to be boring. And we experienced that on the road. Of, like people want us to come out and be like, the guys, we fuck girls and we're going to go out and we're going to find guys to fuck. But it's like, no, we're actually going to no. go home and sleep in our hotel so we can do our job well Sunday. the next day. And it's I'm, not exciting. I'm and fascinated by that. I'm fascinated by that because when I when I started this business, I would get my heart broken when my my stars didn't align with what I thought they were. Mm, like yeah. I remember finding out that Atel wasn't really drinking on stage. Oh yeah, and going like this. <gasps> why did Why did that cause that reaction? I don't know. I love wait the wait. You know, wait, why? Real. I'm curious. Yeah. Like what What about it? Like what about that? kind of like I made you know. go There's, oh man because it was uh, I, what did, did him drinking on stage symbolize like what did it symbolize it seems like and I, I don't obviously i never will say a bad word about david tell he's my favorite comic oh, he's the best, yeah. in the world in the world but there's a little bit of a there there was a little bit of a tightrope act the fact that mm. he had a cocktail in his hand and and is he at work or is he just partying or did he write these down or is he just thinking these how does he have all these great jokes is he just perfect and and right. then and then when you I remember we were in Miami and he brought us on stage to do a shot and uh and I did this shot of tequila and he went and we got off stage. He goes, Did you just do a real shot? And I went, Yeah. And he goes, No, 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 never do that. No, make a ginger ale tell him it's tequila. And I, oh. went, I went, What? <laughs> I went, Hold on. Are you serious? And he goes, Yeah, yeah. Do I did I do cold coffee. I tell him it's Jägermeister. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it was like all of a sudden, like I, the curtain pulled back and I went, oh, you're just a regular dude. Like, and, and you know, people say, you're just wanna... a regular dude. You're not an alcoholic. <laughs> well, no, it, well, he, he was, I, I know, honestly, I know he quit drinking. Yeah. But he, he didn't. I remember him saying to me that weekend, he was like, Hey, I, I know we'll, we'll go and party. I'm going to give you your night. And I was <laughs> like, I was like, I appreciate it. And he was sick. And he was like, it's just I'm not feeling good tonight. I'm going to go home and get, a, get some sleep. But, don't worry. And then Sunday night, he was like, okay, let's do it. And yeah. we went out. And Dave Attell, in, to be respectful, did not really party. Like, he right. would go out and drink, but he didn't, like, party. He wasn't right. the life of a party, even remotely. He was like, he didn't like people recognizing him. Yeah, like, right. Like, it's to himself. He's yeah, very, and, like, And I think I, I remember just being like, being like, oh, that's not what I thought it would be. Yeah. Oh, on stage, you see it. And so I think I... At a very early age, I remember Godfrey pulling me outside and he goes, you got to figure out who you are on stage. And I was like, why can't I just be me? And then and then me can write a joke like Todd Berry or write a thing like David Tell or tell a story. I remember thinking like, why can't I just be me? But I but I was like, I was like, I got to I, I can't separate. I can't separate the t church and state. That's right. okay though. Some people can't. I mean, but you're putting you were putting the same pressure on David Tell that people now put on you. That I put on myself. Y yeah. I put on myself. Like I like we just started going out to bars with people again. Mm -hmm. And and I, I I love it. I love, I love it. I really love it. People where, you know or like fans you're talking fans. about. Fans. I tell okay. the fans where I'm going. Right. Aww. Okay. It was easier when I was doing smaller theaters. Now it's like it Yeah, it's like be, you're it, very famous. What now. do you what do you love about it? Like what lights you up about it? 
uh, like, uh, Adoration. There's a lot. There's a lot. Oddly enough, there's a lot. There's like, I love when someone realizes who I am. Meaning, meaning. Uh, They're like, it makes no, them happy. No, 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 no. Meaning that they know that at heart I'm a podcast fan and I'm a comedy fan. Yeah. And they just talk to me like regular. Yeah. And all of a sudden you get into a, like a real conversation with like a fan. I love those. Like where, where he goes, he goes. Uh, I do too. They're very goes, connected did you, moments. Did you listen to the new, uh, new fucking bonfire? And I'm like, wait, what? And he's like, oh, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You will love it. Like I love when people know that I am that guy. I love I love when because you're seen, you feel seen. Well, yeah, I, 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 I they know. Then I go, you know me. Then I go, I'm like, wow, you okay, you know me. Um, I love I love when a, a, someone that you don't expect, like uh, a, a, it's always like a single. I always think it's Isla. It's Isla, my youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. It's a little different of a person by herself. Or maybe with another friend who doesn't know who the fuck I am. Yeah. But she's into my stuff. And she goes out to the bar. And she's like, I don't really drink. This is my first drink. But I just wanted to get a picture with you. And you go, God damn it, you're making my heart swell. Because yeah. I see I see, I see, see Isla in so many of my, of the female fans I have. Aww, and so, sweet. like, I love those. I love when you get, like, I don't like the the dude who's like, hey, man, take the shirt off. I don't like that guy. But yeah, I love the rude. guy. I love the guy who's like, do you mind if I take my shirt off? Yeah. And, then his, yeah. and then his chick's like. <laughs> He never takes his fucking shirt off. He swims with his shirt on. <laughs> I love that. There's so many things that to love yeah. about it. Well, about so you love the human experience. Fans. You love yeah. humanity. You love people's I love when stories. a dude puts his hand behind your back and his hand's shaking. I love it. It makes yeah, me go like, yeah, yeah. like, I love all of it. I love all of it. And most importantly, I love, I love when it's done and everyone's at the bar and you kind of know everyone because you've had, you've taken a picture with everyone and you're having a drink and everyone's just kind of like, you know, it's spiritual. Yeah. It, yeah, you're coming together for this for this shared thing of like, let's just have fun. Let's I, just I've had some enjoy. really cool experiences partying and and I feel like and part of me when I did the drive in tour and when COVID was happening, I just felt like I wasn't connecting. Yeah. And, you're but, too far away. Well, yeah, like yeah. I do a show and I'd be like, because I all my friends do a show and then they just sit in their green room and then get in their car and then go back to their hotel and I go, Yeah, how the fuck? You know, like there's so much energy. How do you where do you what do you do with all that energy? Why not just go to a bar and yeah. then find the people and then oh it's such a great and as yeah. a as a woman I can see just how terrifying that could be. It could be. I did I did that. I, I did the road. Uh I've been doing the road solo for a little bit and uh where was I? In uh Portland. And uh the last night I went yeah. out and I was like, Hey, I'm gonna go to this bar and it was lovely there best. were people that like saw on instagram and they came they couldn't make it to the shows because they had to work and they were like and they just wanted a picture but uh, but uh, it's to have human interaction is that's life-giving like that's 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 fuel it really is I, i'm i portland was one of my favorite places to go we used to go to uh there was a strip club down the street they have great ones there. and when i had some of my favorite fucking times in there after a show and it was just and this is way before any of that. I remember uh, Amy Schumer came out one night and we ended up going down to the strip club, me, her, and Mark Norman. This is before I knew who Mark Norman was. Oh, and well, we all Marky. partied and all these people came what and hung night. out with us. And and it was cool. And then everyone went back to my hotel room. Nice. And like people, fans, of the, and a couple waiters and yeah. waiters. And oh, that's I cool. Love, I, the thing I love about stand-up is like, is that's what the club atmosphere was like. To get done and go out to yeah. a bar and hang out with people that just saw you and then... and in those in those formative years i remember just being like we were all fans of the same shit yeah like we all dug the same shit do you see the mma fight did you see uh oh uh, did you see this did and then and and so i that's what i love about this business yeah comedians are very accessible you like that's relate. why i like it i mean early on you're doing shows where chris rock is showing up jerry seinfeld is showing up i mean one of my favorite comedy memories is sitting at west side comedy club uh bill burr was doing a show there jerry seinfeld lives uptown and i was sitting there because i was like opening for bill burr just for that show only um and i don't want people to be like corinne saying she's opening for bill burr um and bill burr is like is sitting next to me uh, and talking to me about how excited he is that Jerry Seinfeld's there to see him. And it was just like this row of people like Jerry Seinfeld for there for Bill Burr, Bill Burr talking to me. And I was like, this is so cool. What a moment. And I loved how excited Bill Burr 
still was about comedy and still was was excited that Jerry was there. And I was so excited that Bill was there and that he was talking to me oh. just about comedy. Like, because I will sit and watch all my colleagues perform still. If I have time, I watch the show. I watch everyone's special. Everyone makes fun of me. I watch, I watch everyone's, everyone's special. I watch everyone. everyone's specials. And I and I I love and I, I look at the guys that don't. And look, some of the best comics in the world don't. Bill right. doesn't. I don't think Bill's ever watched anyone's. I don't think he's watched his own specials. But like, Damn. Yeah, yeah, like I, I watch he just, everyone. He's a he's a fucking outlier. He just does his thing and he's on his own thing. But um, like I, I watched when you guys sent me a link. I watched yours. Oh, that's really when, nice. When Thank you. Got, you. When uh, uh uh someone just texted me this morning. I'm I'm, I'm I almost wanted him to say. I'll tell you exactly who it is because uh, it's uh, it's a fucking great special. Um, and I texted him back so I texted him back so quickly. He emailed me. J.F. Harris. Oh, he's great. Me, yeah. Text him, te- he, I want I, this is I want people to understand. Jeff texted me, emailed me at 936. OK, I replied to him at 950. <laughs> and that's how much of a special I had watched. <laughs> like he was like, yeah, I got a new special. By the way, it's banging special. He opens up with fucking his first two minutes and 30 seconds. It's not out yet. No. So I'm not. I should wait till till it's out. Yeah. First two minutes and 30 seconds had me laughing hard five times. And I went, wow. Ooh, that's, that's why wild. I was watching mine. So I was like. Do I did I get anyone right, to laugh? Right, right, like, right. But, but then you go. Every comedian is different. Every comedian has different. They 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 have a long game with their special sometimes, and sometimes it's just joke, 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 joke. And you're like, oh my god, you can't contain yourself. That's why yeah. I love comedy because everybody takes their own their own self to the game. You know, and, and, it's, and, they, and it's weird because as you grow, and, and I know you guys probably feel this is like there is a there is a a foot on both icebergs where you go. I got my fans. Well, I'm performing for that's who's buying the tickets. I want to make sure they have a good time, but mm-hmm. I also want strangers to enjoy what I do. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a it's a tough thing because that's where I'm at right now. Where I go, I think I have a couple jokes in there that aren't that great, but I wouldn't know because my fans love them. Like right. I can go, I can go Isla's a Isla dot dot dot, and then people go crazy. Right. But if you do that in a club, they're like, "Who the fuck? Who is, is Isla? that? Right. Yeah, we need context. Yeah. yeah, that's why when I'm working on stuff, I actually don't like to be on the road because I don't want the benefit of anyone knowing who I am. So right now, I'm just like in clubs, like I mean, just eating shit for a couple weeks until I get a sense of what the new set is going to look like. You know, you know, there's people that can't do that. What? What do you mean? There's, I can't. There's, there's I, comics, I, I use the comics road. That can't. I use the road to, because I trust no, no, my audience. No, no. Meaning trust there are comics that can't bomb. Meaning. If they bomb, it destroys them. Oh, yeah. Oh, Men? It, yeah. <laughs> I want to just, I want to give you names right now. It, there are comics I've seen. Because they don't have a good sense of self. So a bomb can really alter that. Listen, a, as a, an a unlikable a person, can... I bomb in life a lot. So I'm very comfortable bombing on stage. I'm very used to people. Oh, yeah. We've been in meetings. We're looking at me like, with Ooh. dead eyes going, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very used to that. I got so comfortable in failure. I got so That's comfortable amazing. in failure that I almost success made me very uncomfortable. Like and like I like any sort of form of success. I started going like, wait, this is what I'm used to. Yeah, this isn't. Yeah, because I, I mean, there is a, there is a, a very warm blanket in a bombed audition, and you just go, I'm going home to my house. I'm gonna get fucking, I'm gonna get a tall beer and fuck them, fuck them. Yeah. yeah, you know what? I oh, know, I'll yeah. tell you what I don't have to do. I don't have to go in for a callback tomorrow. Yeah, uh, there is a, <laughs> there is a. You take that script and you throw it away when you leave the building. You're oh. like. Never fucking looking at that line again. <laughs> so I haven't funny. auditioned in so fucking long. I love auditioning. Do you really? I love it. I I hated it with a passion. I hate Why? it too. Oh, it was the worst sir. It is the worst version of me ever. <laughs> That's so funny. It is the worst version of me. It's it's whoo. It's it's hard for you to relax and be yourself. Like No, it's uh it's um I it's uh I, it's panic. It's panic, Bert. It's like, uh, oh, it's just bad. It's I like, get so angry that I have to prove myself to someone who, like, I'm like, you don't fucking know me. You don't know what I do. You know, I'm like, I like, it's just like in a moment. I'm like, I'm not gonna do this well. Like, I'm yeah. not. I'm. This is not gonna be the the best version of myself, even if I know ultimately I can do it. Which is weird because I ace job interviews. Job interviews is the best you're gonna see me. Auditions is the worst you're gonna see uh, me. Wow. General meetings. Yeah. yeah general meeting i can sell 
I, 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 you sell I, milk to a cow. I excel in a general meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, no stakes. It's just something your agent sent you on to keep you occupied. Oh, I've gone <laughs> to make you think that they're doing stuff. You're for right. You. I Ooh, love, in general. <laughs> I love a general meeting. I've, I mean, I've. You like talking to people. I love talking, like, and but I love like genuinely. And I love reading someone. Yeah. And I love figuring out what they'll like, and I love. Oh, I love That's a good fun. It's meeting. a little puzzle. Yeah. Oh, and I, I love having. I, I love when it's a soft general. No, don't you don't even need anything to pitch. Yeah. I love. Ha- I love. Then that's when I come to my I- most creative. And I come up with ideas where I'm like, yes. Um, but an audition, oof. I'll tell you where. Like now that we're sharing, I'm sharing the worst versions of me. I shared this with someone the other day. I performed in Knoxville uh, this weekend. I never thought I would ever perform in Knoxville because that's where Travel Channel was based out of. Okay. And uh, and I shared it on stage. I got emotional on stage and said, uh, when I when I was I'd work in Knoxville and I'd drive to go to scripts to shoot. And uh, this kid was like, um, our PA was like, I mean, you should do stand up in Knoxville. And I was like, that, that's never going to happen. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, it could. And I was like, sorry, that's that's my number that got doxxed. Oh. Yeah. They just FaceTime me nonstop. Jesus. And so um, just shut the laptop, Halston. So I said to the kid, I was like, actually, I can almost guarantee you every money that I'll ever make in my life that I'll never work in Knoxville. He's like, Kevin Hart works in Knoxville. I was like, we're a little different. And then I worked in Knoxville, <laughs> right? And and then and then I got fired from Travel Channel. Or let, not not my contract wasn't renewed, but the person that told it to me was uh worked at Travel Channel, worked at Scripps, worked at Travel Channel. And someone said, How did that conversation go? And I it was so bad. I feel bad for the woman that had to fire me because I your team didn't tell you I, they told you directly she called me directly Damn. wow usually your team does it and they fluff you up a little and they nope she what called did me they directly. say she said uh she said hey she she took me to a um she took me to a meet I was I was in a d- overall deal at, at travel channel mm-hmm. and so um I think my deal was probably coming up soon and we went to l- lunch to figure out what, what what I could do for the network or what I wanted to do for the network and I had a bunch of pitches and I had a bunch of ideas and she was like great and I, th- I think she just was like I don't know birth conquer is not my thing I think they were also going paranormal and then there's like oh, okay. there's a bunch right. of things that it was no fault of her own yeah. for letting me go I think she just was like I don't need another fat white guy on our network right well, that's all we have right and so um and 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 I was not being my I was not being my me I was being who I thought they wanted me to be right and she was like, so she, I remember I could tell you what street I was on. I was walking. Uh, I had a vasectomy plan for that day. And we were we were tearing down our house Damn. and uh, and rebuilding the old house. And um, she said, hey, it's dot, dot, dot. Uh, I said, hey, how you doing? And I was like, oh, this is good. She's calling me. She's like, hey, I just wanted to inform you that we are not going to renew your contract. And mm-hmm. I was like, I she, was, she was like the president. She was like the president of the network. And I was like, OK. And she was like, uh. You know, I think you had a good run for the net at the network, but uh, you know, it's not the direction we want to be heading in these days. And I was like, okay. And then she was ready to hang up, and it, but it was happening too fast for me. Right. And so I was like, well, okay. Well, I just want to appreciate. I just want to tell you, I appreciate you taking me lunch the other day. And it's like, okay. And I was like, and I just want to say, you know, I really, I really had a. And by the way, I had a great time working at Travel Channel. But she just became president. I never worked with her. Okay. I just I went to lunch with her once, uh-huh. so I had no connection with the woman. Right. But I'm talking to her about my experience there but she wasn't there when my experience was happening right so, so i'm just closure is not really i'm looking for closure and it's not happening and she's you can see her like literally she's going like, like oh, yeah. I, 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 yeah 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 <laughs> and i was like i just want you to know that like i don't want to work anywhere else and she was like okay well... and i was like and i was like and i and i've gotten offers and she's like oh okay <laughs> it was so bad oh. it was so bad like, well, other so people bad. want me, so you're jumping me, but just you wait. And and you'll see. And but <laughs> oh, and, but if, but I, my my home is Travel Channel. Like, look at you guys like family, and I just want you to know that if I ever have ideas, I, I, I'm gonna bring them to you first. Yeah, and she yeah. was like, uh huh, uh huh. She was but... like, someone fucking hit me in the head with a shovel. <laughs> yeah. Get this guy with the fucking phone. <laughs> I feel so bad. And then and so then I was, and then my, my fucking my cameraman's the most broken dude I know. <laughs> nice but he's like I he just he him. is he is and but he's so blunt so yeah, blunt. yeah so i tell that story in our green room in knoxville and he's like you should be sending her bottles of champagne 
every month, she got you out of something that was not meant. You should be thanking her. Right. She was like, you used to come to Knoxville to do some shit job at Scripps. You just sold out two shows at the same place Kevin Hart played. Yeah. And he goes, you need to be set. And I was like, God damn it. I should send her a bottle. That's yeah. incredible. Change the way you think about it. Yeah. I want to send her. She just, uh, she just le- uh, left tra- Travel Channel yesterday. Where'd yesterday. she go? Do you know where she went? Started her own production company. I should send her a bottle of champagne. Oh, you should. You, you should. should. I should send her a bottle of champagne and say, these, this is the best thing that will ever happen to you. Yeah. yeah. Transition yeah. change is great. Yeah. No, we yeah, were we nice. were fired from Lifetime. Oh, and boy. Uh, my we idea straight was to, to series. send. We had a straight to series. Yeah, I wanted show, to send what? them a funeral arrangement and say sorry for your loss. Yeah. That was Wait, my what idea. Ha- what happened with we, Lifetime? I mean, we, our, this was we, years had a, ago. we had a general with them. Uh, we had a general with a lot of people. And then our agent calls us and they were almost confused, too. And they're like, hey, Lifetime wants to offer you like a 20 episode direct straight to series deal. And we're like. What? And they're like, yeah, I know. It's whatever. I'm like, okay. And then so we started working on the show. And then there was just so many miscommunications. I still don't know where the fuck the miscommunications happened. But uh, we were working on ideas, pitching like concepts and, and segments and stuff. And they, you could tell we went in the president's office to pitch it or to talk, to talk. We didn't know it was a formal pitch. She was appalled. It was as if she was expecting an elementary school to come out and sing a choir song and a bunch of strippers just came out and spread their pussy. Like she, uh, she looked like she saw a ghost. And I was like, this really? is not going to work. Well, it's like speaking of people like expecting you to be a certain version of yourself. They didn't know us. They just, they, they just wanted. They just knew the podcast. They were was thinking hot. of us as if we were some kind of like generic feminist types. And we were going to come on and do, you know, a show about how to be a fucking boss babe. Yeah. And, you know, that girls can throw baseballs too. And we were pitching like comedians. I yeah. mean, one of the segments. We were going hard. One of the segments. Ask a Muslim. Ask a Muslim. So, so we don't. We it can't was say approved, this, but, but at the time the we act- pitched to Lifetime a a a, 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 a thing called <laughs> pit, called Ask a Muslim Faggot. <laughs> she Where almost are- diarrheaed her pants because I was like, you- no, I was like. It Everybody's was- gonna come to, to to a comedian friend, and they're gonna pit, they're gonna say what their problem is, and it's gonna be stupid. And then he's gonna say how he was kicked out of his home. And all, yeah, like all, it's basically like a, a struggle comedian off of like, who is Muslim, and right, and, and gay, who who was okay with. It. Yeah, <laughs> she looked like her asshole fell out of her body. Like yeah. she when when really? we said that, right. I was so excited for her reaction, and <laughs> she hated it. Yeah, oh. yeah. I mean, not surprising I when you think so about funny. it. But you know we're, we're we're always like of the of the school of thought like pitch something and then they can pull it back a little right. bit. But we put always. it was too it was too. I was talking to Tommy the other day about our families and the fragility of life. I don't need to go into too much detail, but how loss just shows up. And on that note, it makes so much sense that people get life insurance, especially term coverage, which is surprisingly affordable. Why not pay a bit off every month? to protect the ones you love. If you're asking yourself this question right now, choose Ladder. Ladder is 100% digital, no doctors, no needles, no paperwork. When you apply for 3 million in coverage or less, you just need a few minutes and a phone or laptop to apply. Ladder's smart algorithm works in real time, so you'll find out instantly if you're approved. If you prefer to talk to a person, their team of licensed agents doesn't work on commission, so they're gonna help you and not try to upsell you, no hidden fees. Cancel at any time. Get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. And Ladder's policies are issued by insurers with long, proven histories of paying claims. They're rated A and A plus by AM Best. And finally, since life insurance costs more as you age, now is the time to get it off your list. Go to ladderlife.com slash Burt today to see if you're instantly approved. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash Burt. Ladderlife.com slash bird. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2022, why are you still paying insane amounts of money each month for wireless? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just $15 a month. I love Mint Mobile because of the savings. Our service is just as good, if not better, at a fraction of the cost. It's an absolute no-brainer. For people looking for extra savings this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. By going online and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text 
plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep the same number along with all your existing contacts. With Mint Mobile, choose the amount of monthly data that's right for you and stop paying for the data that you never use. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash BERT. That's mintmobile.com slash BERT. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash BERT. The nail in my coffin at Travel Channel was the final season of Bert the Conqueror. There was no president, so no one gave notes. Yeah. <laughs> so I shot a full season. Nice. With no notes. What? And it was... Was I think it was some of the better television I've ever done yeah, in my course. life. Of course, of it course. was. I mean, I ruptured a testicle and uh, nice. going off a slide. It. Do you ever? Do you ever a hear? Do you, do you ever hear? What's the name of that place? Action Park. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Action Park's Sounds in New fun. Jersey, and it was <gasps> called Class Action Park. It was called Traction Park <laughs> oh. because so many people got hurt there. Literally, like four people died at this water park. Oh. It was the most dangerous. Johnny Knoxville did a movie about it. It's the most dangerous park in the world. So I go off a slide, a 30-foot fucking slide that drops oh. you into the water, land on my testicle, oh. rupture my testicle, oh. and I go and I go with the camera crew, and I go, something's going on with my testicle. So we go in, and I'm too fat to see my balls, okay? Nice. Wow. So I can't see my balls. So I said, give me, the, can, give me the monitor, and then you shoot my testicles, and I'll see my balls on the monitor. And it, as we're doing that, these two... High school girls oh, no. walk in and they work for Action Park. And they're like, well, one might be older than high school, but one's definitely high school. And they're like, we work for the park. Uh, we need to see what happened. And I went, I said, I, I'm not going to show you what happened. And they said, sir, it's our job. We need to see the affected area. I said, it's my test school. And she, goes, she goes, I said, I said, it's my test school. And she goes, I, I don't care. And I said, uh, everyone keep cameras rolling, please. I, I'm not going to show my test schools to someone in high school i mean yeah. i assume they were in high school right and they're you they're it's, you can see the video it's out anyway, there way it's a girl get out of here and so and so and she's like i work for the park <laughs> it's your job. in order to in order for and she was just like a girl who maybe had too much authority over the summer talking to kids younger than her and now she was talking to me and she was going to do her job <laughs> and and i was not getting in the way and so i said cool so i showed her my dick and balls and she went, for life and she saw a testicle that had been it was it, like size of a grapefruit and she went <sighs> Sir, you need to go to the hospital, and she just walked out. <laughs> and I went, and we got that all on camera, all on camera, perfect. Aired it all on camera. It aired on the network. A, a, a girl going, you need to go to the hospital. And just walked out, and I go, looks like we're going to the hospital. She dropped out of her gifted classes that like changed it, her life. <laughs> it was, it was the, it was the greatest episode. I had a, a m mental breakdown on a ride with a child one time. What? And I fucking fell apart crying. Why did you cry? I was just, uh, it was the day after I fucking blew out my test score. Uh, and so I, I, I'd gone through all that. I watched a woman die that night. <gasps> Bert, you have a very Wait, intense at, life. at the park? I go, to the, I go to the hospital and, uh, oh, oh, I go to the hospital and I, they can't get my blood pressure down because I'm, I'm I've been hurt and I've been partying and I'm, I'm skipping my blood pressure medications. Oh, that too, yeah. So I'm, uh. And, and she's like, I can't let you leave until we get your blood pressure down. And I'm like, and then that gets, it sends it through the roof. And I'm like, okay, all right. So I take a Xanax and then they they take me out of my room and they sit me on a, in a chair to wait, take my blood pressure. And I'm like, I just took a Xanax, I'm be fine. And they bring in this old woman, she's in a wheelchair. And she says, she's crying. And I'm like, this is before, you know, it's funny, but this is before pandemic. So that is when you didn't have a problem touching people, right. especially yeah. in the hospital. Yeah. And she said, uh, and I and I said, "Are you okay?" She said, "I'm I'm dying." And I said, "Yeah, I think we all are." And she said, "No, I'm dying. I'm dying now, and I don't have anyone. Oh I'm God. alone." And I was like, "Oh my God!" And and I I, I think I held her hand. I want to say I did because I think I'm a good person. But like, all I know is it really affected me. I went home that night, and thank God I'd been on a Xanax. My blood pressure had been through the roof. Right. I went to the hotel that night, and I was just like. I was like, so that's how it ends for some people. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just holding the hand of some fucking stranger middle comic. <laughs> just like some comic just holding some stranger's hand. And I it fucked me up. So the next day they put me on this this ride. It's like the number one free fall ride. Oh Jesus. It's like Christ. it's like and it's like five, four hundred and eighty feet. It's at it's uh it's in New Jersey. 
and I. Oh my god! And the and the drop is it's the best ride in the world. The free fall yeah. is so long that it doesn't feel like it's ever going to catch you. Cool. That sinking stomach drop feeling. I love that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love so it. So fun. And I just got caught off guard, and I started sobbing, crying. Yeah, your heart was open. I'm Why? sitting next to this little girl. <laughs> Like this. that's so funny and i Aww. couldn't stop crying i couldn't stop crying oh my and, god and, but like but that was the show and then i think the poor president this network inherited that show and she's like this is not what we're making <laughs> that sounds great to me that, that jersey like episode was a TV. good episode my opening read was uh we're in new jersey like they give me a read and i just i'd rewrite them i go jersey is like a fat ass not everyone's into it but if you are <laughs> You love it. Yeah. And I was like, maybe it's like, maybe it's more like big tits. And you hear my cameraman go, I, I'm not, I'm not sure that's the read they're looking for. And then it just cuts into Jersey. It was a great fucking episode. As a girl from Jersey, I, I think that's a great read. Jersey is like, Jersey's fucking awesome. Jersey's the best. What? Jersey is. When everyone shits on it, I just sit back and go, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you how great it is because yeah. I don't want you fucking there. I yeah, feel that way about Florida. It. I feel the way about Florida. Florida is fucking awesome. You know, Andrew Florida's Schultz went to Florida, place. and I got so jealous. I got so jealous. I went, "You're gonna tell everyone how great this is." Yeah, being <laughs> on boats every day, and 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 fucking going out in Miami, and fucking wearing shirts that are loose fitting, and breeze and hot hot breeze, and I and fucking, clear water. And Miami's sand. incredible. I yeah. love yeah Florida. Yeah, it's a special place. I love Ohio too. Oh, that's I don't hear that often. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I it's I think it's because formative years as a comic there were so many clubs there yeah oh it's, it's a, a great bone. like columbus funny oh great place columbus to funny do bone. comedy yes dayton funny bone yeah yeah Cincinnati it's a good comedy bone. place cleveland improv yeah um they had liberty hilarity they, mm -hmm. hilar they have so many clubs there yeah that you could go to ohio and work so much yeah yeah, yeah. you ended up falling in love with the fucking state i like columbus a lot i just know a lot of people from ohio dated a lot of there's a very ohio. specific type of man from ohio and i've dated several versions of this <laughs> man from ohio and speaking of broken men like i'm actually concerned that something is going on in ohio that we don't know about yeah like something in the water there's man. a darkness in men from ohio that has uh sh shook me to my soul really yeah and it, it's a scene oh i know i know why it's a scene oh, okay, darkness okay. Why, what is it in multiple people uh yeah i don't know i i i i i'm trying to think of do you know guys like that from ohio I, i'm i'm i know a couple yeah that's so funny you say that yeah I, i've talked about it on guys we fucked a lot because it's like it's truly traumatized what is me. that i don't know so wait that's fascinating go through other states can you name what type of guy comes from like texas What's a Texas I dated guy a guy. Like? The guy a who broke my heart and that guys we fucked is based off of is from Texas. He's different. He the, the the problem that I find with guys from Texas is that is how they believe women should behave. And he is not like this is like a feminist person. Um, but there is still like I was too much for him. My my New Jersey existence, like I was too much myself. So there's that southern uh, like pulling back the Expectation. fullness of who you are, which just goes against New Jersey and Over, everything yeah. that I am. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I so, felt like I was always embarrassing him in public. And honestly, like, as like, I'm not an embarrass you in public type you're of not person. Not just gal at all. Yeah. I'm like pretty quiet in real life. Like, yes, I might get in a fight publicly, but like, I'm not like a person who's always getting in fights publicly. Like, if, if I get in a fight, uh, it, there's a reason I'm getting in a fight and it's because no one else is going to get in the fight that's necessary to have. But it's not like, I mean, this is happening like, you know, once every couple of years. This is not like I'm going to bars and getting in yeah. fist fights or something. So then what country, like if you had to say there would be one country where the perfect guy lives like could you could you country like because because guys could do this we can do this and i've done this before where you go uh if i could if if you could date a girl from any country what country would you want her to be from yeah it's like i couldn't date a french chick so the accent drives me nuts really like, yeah it's, oh, it I makes it sound it. like they're fucking like they like it's almost like you're talking to a child you know and it's, kind of and they're like oh can I try these? Yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, that's that's not even French. But like. <laughs> but they're very like, uh, well, how you say. Uh, like they're very yeah, yeah, it's, uh, whimsical with I, their you know what it is? Views, I'm just Amelie. thinking of I'm just thinking of Pulp Fiction when she goes, I want to get pancakes. I do not know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is Zeb? Zeb's dead. Oh, is this, can we take his bike? Um, <laughs> but like I, I want like. 
when you think of like so so i think the ideal thing for most guys is these scandinavian women right Really? Well, I thought I think, like I Brazil. Think... I was thinking. Oh, what's a wow. Scandinavian okay, okay, woman? Okay, this Wait, is what's a, a, Scandinavian a very woman? different blonde, direction. Blonde, though. blue eyes, big tits. Yeah, the Swedish b- bikini team. Oh. But then you meet a girl from like Denmark and they're a little thicker and they're a little more like butchish and they're like, uh, nice. They're like, no, we can fuck anyone. Yeah. <laughs> like, I remember meeting those girls and it was like almost like when I met him in real life in college, I was like, oh, that's not what I was into. <laughs> yeah. Like there's a socialism to them that you're like, you're like, I'm, I, I'm think I'm looking for something a little more unique. Right. Um, Like Australian girls are like, you better like to fuck girls with calluses on their hands. What? Because they're like. <laughs> okay. And by the way, and I've never had a sexual experience. But that's just my takeaway. Right, yeah. right, like, right, right. All right, mate, give me the cock. I'll yeah. fucking jack it off for you. All right, let's go down this. I'll fucking jack it off. Like. Uh, so like when you think of guys, that's that's how we think of Why guys. The- will stereotype countries of women. Yeah. How do you stereotype countries like of men? British? British guys are very like meek and very like mm, they're like they always start apologizing for being the way, and it's like oh fucking have an opinion. Yeah, Italian yeah. guys so that's are always why. full of shit, but <laughs> I love it. I just think like I'm a very like aver- this is like wild stereotypes just going, but you know a lot of women like talk about liking European men, and I go I would never trust anything this person said to me. <laughs> uh, Israeli dude is very, like, very smooth, very touchy-feely, even with, like, everybody. Like, really? Israeli guys are very hands-on. And they say, like, my, my trainer is Israeli, and she say, like, they'll call, the, the vernacular they use with each other is, like, my love, my life. Like, the, the words they use in Hebrew mean my life. Hello, my life. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I like My boyfriend's Israeli, and much. he's not like that at all. He's, he's Israeli, for me, is just, like, you break a razor in a hotel room, and you, then you break something, like, you break a vase to make up for the razor that was a dollar ninety nine that you broke. That's just that like, Florida anger, though. Just like anger, com- it's Israeli. It's like the Israeli coming out of nowhere. Like my it's first a experience, hot anger. My first experience with Israeli dudes in general was moving to New York, and Dave Attell, his version of is of representing them on stage. Oh yeah, like like that was the only. That's all I knew about Israeli dudes. I don't know that many Israeli dudes, but wait, keep going. So, well, so Israel, like, like, have you ever, you have you ever been to Israel? Mm-mm. I was like, because it's the only place that's more stressful than New York. Uh, just like people yelling at each other in the market, just truly yell, le- yelling, yelling, uh, really, and like, anger. T- to get food at from a, a restaurant, like people will cut in front of you, so you have to like basically oh, aggressively shit. push someone in front of the way. Oh, Otherwise, you're oh. not getting food. That okay, day. okay, okay. I, uh. I did. I have never been to Israel, but I did live in Hollywood, where Hasidic <laughs> Jewish people are. Oh, yeah. Are like, where, where I moved to Brooklyn and but right in a neighboring neighborhood, and they don't like people that aren't them. <laughs> I mean, it was. I had some of the most like. First of all, lines it don't exist to them. They just literally walk in front of you, and then yeah. like what? And you're just like, <laughs> yep. they, they, and they look at you like yeah. this is cool, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, smash your pass. I'll name a country, and you just say, uh, you say. I, 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 based off of nothing, nothing. Yeah. based, based off, yeah. off of like, yeah, caricatures ba- in TV shows. <laughs> yeah, based off of, based off of, I'm nothing, probably gonna okay? say smash to everything. Um, let's do, uh, countries. I, got, I just got a globe, highly recommend, by the way. Oh, they're all awesome, dude. I they? bought an educational globe and I just stare at it all the time and I'm like, I didn't know half this shit was here. Can I tell you? It's a lot of countries, man. A globe is super fucking fun. So it's is really a map. cool. Like, I, I can see a map and just be like, <laughs> so. Like, it's really Just cool. The whole world. But when you have a globe, the whole world is right there. And you're like, Jesus Christ. Like, you, oh, yeah. the relation, the distance between countries and the, oh, Wait, my God. Before we pull up this list of countries, have you guys been watching Pam and Tommy at all? No, I but we, we were just talking we're about just it last talking about night. It. We yeah. need to watch it. Wait, who are you talking with? It? Uh, a woman, the woman we're writing a show with. Is, what did she say about it? She she's into it. We were talking about but how she, iconic she said, they were, and she was conflicted too. That's what we were talking about right. because she was because Pamela didn't like yeah it. actual Pamela Anderson. Right. And I'm like, oh, but I like her, and if she doesn't like it, I, I don't want I, from a, like a, from a woman's perspective. She was it, she was bothered that Pam wasn't okay with it. I have to make a public apology to both Pam and Tommy. Uh oh, because Why? because I I was the thing, I was the you bad the part of the of 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 society. Like where the tape came out, I'm the oh. guy who watched it. I'm the guy who made jokes about it. Okay. I'm the guy like I made a joke on on VH1 about it. Um, oh right. Like yeah, I yeah. made a joke on VH1 about it. Like uh, I I I liked Tommy. I idolized him. I was like, oh, he's got a big dick and all the things that like 
Pam that really hurt Pam yeah. and I watch and you watch her be hurt. I was I was that energy. I, yeah. I, was, I was a part of that energy. The, the everyone was. I think everyone yeah. owes her an apology. Because they weren't when they're saying these things, they weren't thinking of a woman who uh, got hurt and felt violated. That's not what's on the yeah. top of your mind. The top of your mind is, ooh, what's a good angle here? Where do I want to make the joke? Like that's yeah. So it's a totally yeah, we different. Did, we did. Uh, I, I did a. Uh, well, I mean, I'm no point in saying the joke again. But it was <laughs> right, just like, right. you have to but, uh, but it was like, and it murdered on VH1. Damn. And it was Mark Maron's TV show. Never mind the Buzzcocks. And it murdered, and it gave me a great appearance. And then I, they brought me back for to do more episodes. And and then I look and I go, and I was working with Pam Anderson's friend. Pam mm. Anderson's friend was on the show with me, Molly something. And and I and now I just look back and I'm watching this, and I'm like kind of devastated at how how women were portrayed if you did certain things at certain times in this yeah. country you were portrayed as a slut mm -hmm. and if you were a slut you had no rights yeah yeah and then and then i look at like amber rose doing the slut shaming walk the yeah the slut walk yeah the, the anti-slut slut shaming walk it, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah we just walk sluts, sluts around slut. and show them what sluts they Shame are sluts. but it's but it's like and then you start going oh i ah that's so funny how deaf i was to what was going on I I would I would hope that Pam would I, I can see how this would be a tough series for her to watch but she should know that she comes out I think a lot of people come out realizing how empathetic they should have been ah uh, yeah. yeah it was really that's crazy that's always good that's good yeah society does culture I, the way I they behave I love Tommy I love I've always loved Tommy yeah but I love Tommy and and this sounds horrible but I love Tommy because of that tape Mm. Why? Why because do you? Because it was, it was a dick? cool. It was a cool tape. He's like big dick. He seemed like a fun guy. Yeah. He seemed like a guy like to have smoked cigarettes and drink beers. And he was a drummer. He had millions of dollars. He had cool cars. Yeah. He yeah. had guns. Yeah. Like I liked. I liked. So like the thing, the very end of this. I mean, you should watch it yourself. But like, yeah, I want to. That 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 tape put him on a pedestal. Of course, I actually and then knocked her down. Yeah. Knocked her down professionally. Yeah. Now, I, right. I I I would I would argue that. I'm always a Pam. Pam Anderson is the number one bad bitch yeah, across the board. Cool. That is the number one across the board. Pam Anderson. She is in the, I will put her, Marilyn Monroe, Pam Anderson, uh, Anna Nicole Smith, just women that were like just fucking icons. Yeah. Right? Icons. And, and, and I don't know if that tape solidified that in my head or, or, or but it didn't hurt it. Yeah. Cause I saw that tape and I was like, that was like whoa, but it's insane. It's the it's. I never watched of, the tape. You never watched the tape. I never watched the celebrity sex tape. You never watched any of them. No, I, I don't watched know why. All of them. I don't know why. I think I watched parts of the Kim K one. I watched Kim K. Yeah, I before I knew she was. Yeah, yeah, pieces of like One Night in Paris that I've seen. I like. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, Part of me feels bad because right. I because I've I've like I've sent I don't really send nudes and videos and stuff, but like I have before, mm -hmm. and I'm like ah oh, man, if those got I would feel violated so i don't want to watch somebody else can i tell you can I, violation. can I tell you though I, i'm trying to speak from the the idiot side like if i'm being you can just say candid. how you feel you don't have to say yeah, the right okay. thing i know but but like so like okay if if i got a text from i'm assuming i'd get it from Luis j gomez <laughs> and just saying hey guess what there's nudes uh there's nudes up of either of you right, right. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah, you would definitely get that text from Lewis. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I, I fucking love Lewis. But but like, but I I would I have to say this honestly, I would definitely look at them. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I I don't think it would. It would never change the way I looked at you, and I would never want really it, never never. I, I I. But I think that I by. I saw Ari Shafir's balls once, and it changed the way I looked at him. Uh, oh really? Uh, Not in a bad way, but yeah. just like wow, I. Seen your balls. Well, yeah, every time I see her, I go, oh, I know what your balls yeah, exactly. look like. Yeah. That's more what it is. Every time oh. I see him, I'm like, I know what your balls look like. <laughs> well, I think that's, I think that's, I would, I, if I, nudes of me got leaked, I would feel, um, I would definitely be, and I, I know, I say that you can see me naked online anywhere. I was going to say, all right, yeah, yeah, your nude. All yeah, the I don't know why I'm saying that. <laughs> I, it's so funny. I, but it was, it was your dick. Is there a picture of your dick yeah, online? I was like, fully nude? Sure there is. Really? I'm sure there is. Okay, well, then you got nothing to hide. No, I'm not going to say, see if you can find me naked. I'm, I'm certain I did one uh, Facebook live one Wait, can time. Can I look for it? Yeah, of course. I'll text you one. <laughs> <laughs> I texted one to Shane Gillis the other day. And dudes he... text nudes to each other? 
uh well i think it it warranted the Me. whatever the chat thread was <laughs> it was uh I don't know. It was something he called me. I'm sure he called me gay. And I said, uh, then if we're gay, then you need to see this. And he was, <laughs> on, a pl- he was on a plane. Oh, boy. And he opened it up in front of the person next to him. Nice. And he was like, oh. Oh, oh. my God. That's Perfect. Really nice. Burt Kreischer naked images. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I don't see anything. Anything's blurred uh, out. There's one. There's one where. Uh, one- oh, no. That's blurred out. The picture from the Houston Improv is the one Maybe that i sent shane the other day dip. you can see this one was Not a lot i was on a facebook live okay and i didn't i didn't know <laughs> that the, oh you see it you didn't know that water no, was clear <laughs> yes yeah, this is the different one hot summer nights tour returns oh wait oh no it is blurred out it's blurred out with something that looks like a dick <laughs> and so i just was doing a facebook live and i did not know I put the camera up and I said, I'm naked in my pool. And they go, I don't believe you. And I said, no. So there was a shadow. And I thought the shadow was the ledge. So I thought you couldn't see. So I just backed up a little so you could see right, right there. But right. What I was seeing was the shadow on my waist, not realizing I'm fully naked, flexing <laughs> and answering questions. And everyone's like, bro, I see your dick. Amazing. And, 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 and it's, and it be a dick is buoyant oh, so it's right. pointed Florida. at the camera so it's like I you can't really tell how long an army. arrow is if it's coming at you so that's it <laughs> looked Uncle horrific Sam's it looked horrific <laughs> i'm really excited for this you can't take the kid out of gary indiana but why would you in bust down peacock's new original comedy series four friends working at a midwestern casino are aspiring aspiring to be mostly where they are created by and starring jack knight langston kerman Sam J and Chris Red bust down as inspired by the crew's real life chemistry, conversations, and friendships. The result is an irreverent, offbeat, unpredictable swirl of hijinks and absurdity. The friends navigate out obstacles and opportunities in and out of the workplace, including but not limited to climbing a very short career ladder, fending off horny church ladies, and hiding from your best friend during a fist fight at the fondue factory. In a moment where everyone has something to say, the four friends relish saying not much of anything or alternatively, the dumbest thing possible. I am so excited for this series. I absolutely love these guys. Bust Down is streaming right now, only on Peacock. Jennifer Lawrence had n- nudes that right. were leaked right. of hers. Oh, Unless- you know what? I, my boyfriend and I got in a big fight about Jennifer Lawrence's nudes because uh, I he wanted to look at them and I was and I was still in that space of if my news got leaked i felt feel extremely violated now i'm not i don't feel that way but that's just how i felt at the time um and uh i would i would feel by vi- I, I would like i don't know it's funny I, I wouldn't feel like i was violating you right like if if, if i got that text and I, I would be like oh yeah yeah definitely i wouldn't feel like i was violating you but i don't but i also you, respect you, you guys be. so like you wouldn't be though well, exactly. it's curious it's fine like i i don't think it's nothing wrong with looking at a, a leaked nudes I, it's fine i think it, i feel like it's a violation still if the person who w- was it's if it's my news and i don't want them leaked and then people are looking at them i mean that's not if it was yeah if it was something that was like leaked in malice oh that's so gross to me well that's why and, I mean, and, like, and we know dudes that have done that and it's like i fucking Ooh. hate you and i yeah. want you to drive your car off a cliff yeah so i don't want anybody reg- like relishing in this bad person i think it's also illegal act. now here in california revenge there's there's revenge, a, porn. revenge yeah, yeah. porn laws and i think california is usually the, always like the first state to uh have laws that are very progressive as far as like animal cruelty and stuff like that and i think revenge porn too because it was a uh, like Black China, I think, was going through something mm. with revenge oh, with porn Rob, and yeah, Rob yeah. Kardashian. Well, but now, yeah. like, like, like I, I really only send nudes to one guy who's a comic. And but when I sent it to him, I was like, in my head, I was like, these, I kind of want him to leak them. <laughs> Who is a comic? Yeah, dance owner. <laughs> See, oh. I know a comic <laughs> has showed nudes of me to another comic, and then like they're high level. And now when I see, like, I just know it happened. I think Dan's too respectful to because show it's my like news, changed the way this. Per- I can see it in the person's eyes. Like I know, and I piece things together from like Instagram. And I was like, I don't like hugely care, but I'm like, that's just was kind of shitty. I'll tell you what it is. It's a weird. It is a. It is a weird boy flex <laughs> that, that where you go like as a grown man yeah if you go uh take a look at her first and foremost i go 
I don't believe you actually got that picture. Right. right I believe right. you downloaded it off the internet and said, <laughs> so take a look at her. I might start doing that. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to take one of uh, like a picture of some perfect like chick a and go, on the beach. And go yeah. Leanne said that to me the other yeah. day. And then be like, what? Because it's a weird flex. And then, and then I go, I don't respect you as the dude for doing that. Right. And I, and in a weird way, it puts the woman up here. Cause I go, I go, she's a cool chick. She put herself out for this guy. And then he's fucking yeah. showing me her tits. Yeah. What, why would you a do that? A lot of my guy friends show me nudes of like guy women friends that they're will banging. Show me. And I go, I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm going to look because I'm I'm a human and I'm curious. Yeah. And I'm all, and I always like to see, especially with men, I'm like, I like the pose. What are you like, pulling? Are you doing? Like, what are you getting? And yeah. then I just get mad about it. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> you don't deserve, you don't that, deserve that. that. No. <laughs> it's, it's funny because when now that we're talking about these sex tapes, it was I, I I I it elevated Kim Kardashian yeah. and Paris Hilton for me. Yeah. It elevated them and I was like I was like, Oh, they're beautiful. Like yeah. I, I, by the way, I, I don't think I ever realized how pretty Kim Kardashian is. But if they put is. it out I think she's so pretty, yeah. If yeah. they put that sex tape out by themselves on purpose, would it have elevated them for you? No. Yeah. The fact that it was leaked. Right. And the fact that the fact that it was leaked. I mean, some of these came out on. Purpose. I don't think oh, they, they came out. I think, I think they Kim both K came was, out on. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Well, now For that sure. we know the inner workings of Kris Jenner a lot yeah, better, yeah, that, that came. She's out a bad purpose. bitch, a uh, bad business bitch, and, she, <laughs> and I yeah. love her. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, the, the leaked part of it. That's like she did this with the intention of just being in the moment. Chelsea Handler had a leaked sex tape. Mm. <gasps> really? I didn't she's know that. She's naked all the time, so I feel she's like naked all the time, but. She did it. But what, sex what, is different. It's so vulnerable. Can I tell you? No, no, but can, it was. But Was she insulting she it, the guy? She, no, <laughs> she did it as a joke. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I thought it was actually really fucking hilarious. And so in a weird way, I I don't remember seeing her naked as much as I do thinking that was funny and really smart. Yeah. She, she would send a tape to clubs and go, hey, I'd love to work your club. <laughs> and it would be. <laughs> It would be like a like thirty seconds of her stand up, and then it would cut to her <laughs> sucking the guy's dick, and then it would cut back to her stand up. Holy shit, That's Chelsea! So what a legend! God damn it, she's so good. And then someone released it as if it was a legit sex tape, and Chelsea was like, "Yeah, I put that out, fuck That's face." So like, I put that out. Funny. By the way, I could be wrong about that. If Chelsea wants to change that narrative you can yeah, like yeah. I, I, I remember seeing it and going like oh that's funny as fuck that is really fucking it's really funny. fucking funny that is really so, fucking and then you funny. know you know for a fact the club booker's like bob we're bringing her down yeah that's i mean but it, it, i love Chelsea. Yeah, you make the booker laugh like my, that my fear is not a sex tape my biggest fear is i will someone's gonna steal the camera on my computer and have video of me jerking off i'm also yeah. i'm also why because your jerk off face is like gnarly i don't even know what it is right it's, no, one it is. no one does no one knows like, their own jerk like, off face <laughs> I'm sure I'm blinking a lot. I've got my focus. readers on. I'm like, oh my god, Bert. <laughs> I but like, uh, that's one of my fears, and uh, and uh, and the other one. You ready for this? Just put a band aid like, over I your camera. I am very though. conscious, very conscious of what comes up in my Pornhub searches. Like if if what comes up in them? Meaning meaning when I type in Pornhub, yeah, uh, homepage. Like if if you, I don't I. Meaning I won't click on certain things yeah. that read wrong. Like anything Give me an example. underage. Uh oh, teen yeah. girls. No, yeah. no, I don't click on yeah. any of that shit. Not I mean, first of all, I don't because the branding of it is too close to home for me. Right. So I right, go teen right. girls, I live with teen girls. I don't yeah, want yeah, that. I, yeah. I, teen girls come don't through cross my house. Yeah. Streams. Uh uh, I I will not click on uh father stepdaughter. I won't click on that. Okay. Uh anything that says daddy, I won't click on that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because I know. That if someone, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is in our future, is people will release our web searches. That's going to be worse than our fucking leaked Sony emails. You think the web searches? I don't really. Got to get a VPN. I don't Bert. search for anything I don't, scandalous. All I do is scan. All I do is scandalous. Like I, 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 here we go. Ready? So I created a podcast based on this called Open Tabs, <laughs> where where I was <laughs> I was fascinated by like if right now right now out of context. Hold on. Right now out of context. Think about it. If they release your your Google searches, one of them would be Burt Kreischer's dick, right? And then and then they go, you go, and then all of a sudden you'd be like, hold on, I, was I mean, I got there. an explanation, yeah, for all right. Of them. So I got an explanation for all of them, but my I was fascinated by my open tabs by things that I I had searched, yeah. Babyface, the musician, uh, he had a someone we got into a car and they were like he had a stroke, and I was like, what? So I searched Babyface, oh. uh, Kirk Cameron's net worth. 
Uh, <laughs> After he found Jesus and before. Jussie Smollett suicidal. Uh, sneaker stores in Asheville, North Carolina. Okay. 140 kilograms to pounds. Uh, American Tobacco Trail. Running research in Raleigh, Durham. Inherent Vice. Ooh. Well, I'm not going to say this one out loud. Why? Uh, bad Funeral Flowers. Oh, my God. The Battle of Waterloo. Apt to remove hair from faces. <laughs> uh, Smoky Mountain. Best Coast. Who is oh, Jared Paul? Coast. The Super Bowl. Matthew Where are Marsden. you getting these? Where you this save is, them? So, no, just go like this. Oh, you don't close up. your tabs. I don't close my phone. tabs. Yeah. I keep them all open. Michael Roof. You know who that is? No. That who is, is that? Chicken. Giannis oh. Papas. Okay. What's he doing? Albuquerque Isotopes. Wow. George Lopez. You have Sam a Lee. lot of tabs open, Bert. Grand Lux. <laughs> uh, stomach Churning. Sarah Gellerstein. I don't know who that is. I'm sure I'm this. Think. Tampa Improv, Omicron variant, Joey Diaz, Dune. <laughs> These Grand are all Lux. sweet and innocent. But yeah, but like, but like, yeah, mine the are question crazy. is, the question is, if they could go through your fucking straight up all your history, how I go into, I go into, I get into like, like uh, spirals where I start getting into things like, sure. And so, and where I go, if you opened up all the things I'd Googled, right. I'm not sure. Like that's why if I, when I get done a computer, I keep it. I don't. That doesn't go anywhere. People are recycling computers. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I've googled. After I you die, drunk. you're just gonna find a room of computers. But, but yeah, no. I mean, I, I, having a sexuality podcast. Like, I mean, we've both googled pedophilia a lot oh, of yeah. times. Yeah. We had to for research too. And, and you're so like, I every time I type it in, I go, "This isn't." I mean, I, I've googled like how to get help when you're a pedophile. Right. Exactly. Like, there's no but, help. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's the problem. the problem, and it's also because you're, there's so much fear in even typing. I know, something and I'm like, like that into guys, a computer. This is how pedophilia is running rampant because right. everyone's like, I can't even say it. You is can it, say it. Pedophilia. Is it running rampant? Oh my! God. There's a lot of pedophiles out there. I can't tell you how many people I know personally, but how many people write us to say Molest, that they were molested? A lot of molesters I mean, it's out there. Serious? I got very like, lucky. I didn't get molested. I feel, yeah. I, I should have gotten molested. I feel the same way. I felt the same way, and then I went to a psychic who said I was molested, and I was like, Oh man, we're just gonna. We're just going to erase that one. But I don't think I was, but it's weird when a psychic says you were. So wait, so wait, is, pe- is pedophilia that bad? Because there's, yeah, there's only one. You don't think that you didn't know how many people were doing it? We, we hear from people all the time. And so we have a really good gauge of what people are going through from all over the world. And one of the first things we learned when we did Guys We Fucked was most women have been sexually assaulted, have been raped. So many women have been raped. It is wild. I just I felt, s- I felt so stupid for not realizing that. And this was before the Me Too movement uh, came back. Uh, and so we were kind of, we felt like we were like sitting on a secret. We're like, this is terrible. And then uh, it, it's rape and uh, pedophilia. It, how common pedophilia is, is wild. Really? And most men wild. I know had a very weird experience with, with a, a much older woman when they were like Talk about early teens being that, really? you know, is kind of talked about like it should be cool or like you should be happy, but you can tell scarred them in a way that was not. At least about. four times we've interviewed a guy, mostly they're usually comedians who have been like, yeah. And I was like 12 and the babysitter was right. like, hey, let me see you jerk off. And I did it. And I was like, it's happened a lot. That's fucked up. Are you OK? And he's like, uh, is that fucked up? I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's fucked up. But see, that's where masculinity. That's one of the ways that masculinity gets fucked up. Right. It took years later to go. Oh, yeah, that is fucked up. It's not a prize that an older woman wanted me to jerk off as a child. Yeah, it's always like the, the mom's friend who used to come over. It's, yeah, really. Or the babysitter. Yeah. Well, I, I never I never had that experience. I never had that experience. I, I, I kissed a. And you were running around in a Speedo. I, yeah. I kissed a 24 year old woman when I was 15. Whoa. And it was the greatest kiss I've ever had in my life. But, Whoa. Did, but it was what, what the kiss we stood beach. for. But as an adult, do you ever think, what the fuck was the 24 year old now woman? I do. Now I go, kiss now me. I go, what? There's the something fuck? wrong there. There's something wrong with her. But yeah, we were, we were, not, <clears throat> not with you. Not with yeah. you because you were just like, oh, I'm we good. were on the beach in Snoo Smyrna and, uh, and they, they were older and we tried to flirt with them. We were kids and they're like, and they were like, I was 14. 14 or 15 I had to be 15 I was a freshman in high school and we were like where are you guys going and they're like you guys are too young for us we're like no just give us a give us a chance we started talking to them and then there and then the girl said I would blow your mind and I said try me and she leaned in and kissed me and I and all I will say is as she pulled away I was like I was on my heels going Uh. (laughs) 
All right, that because scenario's not also, as bad as I thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, but you also but, had an experience yeah. with a woman who was 24. She's had sex a bunch, I'm sure, and she's kid, so she knew exactly what she was doing. You were fresh blooded, like I don't even know what this like titties like. Yeah. So and she came in and was smooth to you. In, in she a, just in a came time in, leaned in, grabbed me, and started making out That's with me. That's kind of awesome. And I was like, huh. And then she, just, her and her friends walked away, and I was like, I think I'm in love. Yeah. <laughs> I was she like, I need to start kissing impact. more women. <laughs> oh my god. That's pretty sick. But I never had. I never had. It's funny. I know people who I know friends who lost their virginity young. Yeah, and it's it is kind of crazy because you steal their childhood. Yeah, you 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 then you you put a wall up. You go childhood's over now. Here's where you are. This is where. Yeah, and it's it's not fair. No, yeah, of course not. No, nope, it's not. Um, the only answer for pedophilia is just to kill them, right? No, no, oh, it's not real? because well, I thought I thought that was up, the thing. But if you but <laughs> you thought he, that's what guys we fucked was about. No, but I thought that was it's the thing. Killing, that they killing, go, if you if you pet if you. Rape no. a kid, you have to kill them. Well, that's okay. the that okay. So uh, yeah, that's I'm, the jail. Have, that's laws. Having in jail. pedophilia, like being a pedophile and fucking kids, to me are two different things. Because okay. you can be a give pedophile me, and never touch a kid for your whole life. It's sweet. very possible. Give me the because I just saw this comic do this really funny joke about pedophilia. Yeah, and he said he gave all the different definitions of how old the child has to be, and he goes, you know why we don't talk about pedophilia? about all the differentiations because now I look like a pedophile. <laughs> I right, think that was, a, that was that John, Jean Marco Scorsese? I know that joke. Will you type it in? Uh, hebophilia is being attracted to prepubescent kids. Pedophilia is like a fucking kid. So like okay. a baby to a yeah. eight year old. Nine to 15 is hebophilia. And then, and then even there's an, so it's, yes, pedophilia, hebophilia, um, it might be hebophilia. I, I never hebophilia, know. And yeah. then it's a, a febophilia. Is the next one, and that's like right before people are legal. Like, yeah, basically. Uh, and it, like that joke is funny. I also saw that yeah, joke yeah, yeah. online, but I do think it is important because there's a big difference between a pedophile and like in a febophile. I, again, I don't know how to say it, but yeah, I'm like, that's the problem with reading too much. You can never talk about it, so you never know how to say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I never I never um I remember in high school girls we were the the hot girls would always date 24-year-old dudes. Right. Yep, and I remember I being mean, like, what yeah. the fuck? Because it felt like, powerful. And I was like, how come we don't get to hang out with the girls? They're our age. You got to go. I go. I remember going like, why aren't you hanging out with girls in college? But like, those 24-year-old guys were like the biggest losers on the uh -huh. fucking planet. Yeah, they, they were. Now you. I look at it and go. Yeah, you were good. What garbage dudes yes. were hanging out in high school? That was my first boyfriend was a garbage dude like that. Yes. Really? I was 16 and he was 20. And he like was in college and I was in high school. He went to my high school, but like I was in high school and he was in college and I was like, oh my God, it's the love of my life. Lost my virginity to him. He had a whole ass girlfriend in college. Really? Yeah. So wait, because th so then he was a hebophile. He may have just so. been a dirtbag. Yeah. yeah, he's more of a dirtbag. <laughs> but so we did have sex. So we did have sex dirt bag in there too. Well, it, that's why it's difficult sometimes when you get into these like older ones. Like, I don't know that a, a grown man who is attracted to like a 17, I don't know. It depends. I'd have to see the 17 so year old aspects to it. That it's you like, are you just on. like kind of gross or do you actually have a mental disorder? Because I but mean, a pedophile is something they're, like to me, I truly believe like, you know, if you went to Bodies the Exhibition and you sliced open their brain and you looked at it, I truly think you could physically see with the naked eye something different, the same as a serial killer. Yeah. I yeah. think it's actually something wrong with your brain. If you want to fuck a 16, 17 year old, you might just be but a dirt bag. Another, another, uh, another underlying um, uh, motivation in that with an older guy dating a teenager is they just want to date a girl who's not going to stick up for herself. It's grooming. Too to know that's who she more is like yet. grooming. She, you can do anything. She's going to be okay with it. She thinks you're so cool. Fucking, there's a comic that has a, because male comics always a lot of times have younger girlfriends. And there's one comic in particular that has a younger girlfriend that I'm like, she's she, you can tell her naivete is like emulating from her. And so and it made me go, that's why some guys like dating younger women, because they don't they're not going to uh, be a be a problem. That's crazy. I like yeah. the problem. I like the problem. The problem is the fun thing about dating yeah, like, a woman. You, you, wow. Like, well, I like the problem. I, you're the, unique. In yeah, that, you're though. unique. Yeah. No, I, I think I a lot think of people unique. I think I know. I know I can I can name I mean I feel like maybe I am I I don't know but like I liked I liked dating some I don't know I like dating someone who corrects me and right, tells right. me I'm Let, wrong on your toes yeah your love or, for your wife honestly this is sad but like is unique and like that's one of the th reasons I like you <laughs> you know it's, I said I said you guys were coming over today and Liam was bummed that she's not going to be here oh like, I want to I want to I want to meet them I want to say hi yeah well, I so used to meet her met, last met, time yeah. yeah I mean she, legend a legend in her, her own right. yeah she but I like I I, I think I needed. 
uh, this, and I'm certain someone can isolate what's broken in me in this, is I need someone who says it's okay to buy a new house. I need, I need, I, I need someone who's also, I need someone smarter than me to go. Mm. I need a teammate. <clears throat> yeah. I couldn't, I can't imagine dating. I really honestly could not even fathom dating someone who's, let's just say, 25 because i right. go because i go that's your bus muse i go yeah well yeah right i want her on the bus <laughs> to pearl yeah. joints for us <laughs> yeah. i'm not gonna take fucking financial yeah. advice exactly. from her. exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah yeah. i'm here to have a fucking life you want to be challenged you want to be oh uh, yeah yeah you want to be held accountable you want to be yeah some people don't though and so one of the ways to do that is to date somebody younger who's kind of just doesn't know who they are yet what's the perfect age to date a woman i think and, and do you think it varies 30s, man, women in their 30s, 30s, 30s are the best. 30, I, I can't 30, believe how better they are than their 20s holy I, shit when i was when we were at uh we were at uh in serbia i was with my co- my co-lead and i and we were talking about the per like how young would i date if 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 god forbid something happened to leanne how young would i date and i and she said what about 25 i said too young yeah. too young for me i i, I just i don't I don't. You can't relate, and I don't think they're totally formed yet. As like, yeah. Well, your brain actually is is fully developed at twenty five, and then at thirty five, pretty much your entire personality is solidified. Yeah, I like you can that's what I like. It, I like yeah. the personality part. I said yeah. thirty five. Yeah. And then she said to me, "I'm thirty three. Awesome Am I too young for you?" And I went, Ooh. and I really actually was like, "You're not, but you grew up in Eastern Europe, so like, I think you're different. Been yeah, there a little bit more. Yeah. But like in in the states, I met Leanna like the." perfect time for leanne like i met leanne in her peak franchise player years oh that's like, great she was 30 she was like she knew what she wanted yeah like there's nothing better than a, than a person who knows what they want yeah it's very refreshing to be around it's she exhilarating knew, she knew what she wanted she knew what she didn't want mm-hmm. she knew what she didn't like that's why the 30s <clears> are the best <throat> i've the best best age i've ever experienced is the 30s holy crap i i didn't no one told me it was gonna be this good uh, sex with a 52 year old can get hot I bet she was sweating this morning. Like she was sweating. <laughs> she was like, I'm fucking, I'm going through menopause. I'm sweating. And I go, I think it's sexy. I feel like we're in a tent somewhere. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like how nice is that? I'm sweating from that D just, just pretend. I put her in a fucking wrestling move. That's how fun it was. <laughs> yeah. I love this bird. I love this for you. That's great. Yeah, but I think I couldn't, uh, I don't know. I always liked being challenged. I like being challenged. Me too. Yeah. I, I like being challenged in everything. Yeah, it's fun. It's life. It's yeah. life force. What, what's your schedule look like? I'm just sitting here talking to you guys like we can oh, talk Oh, we forever. have to go. We yeah. have to go. Yeah. What time? What's your next we thing? One thirty. Uh, so you're going to do Heather McDonald's podcast? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's uh, a scoop. She's fucking awesome. Yeah, she's really She's sweet. awesome. You know, she's like, she's she's awesome. I was going to say, she's like my realtor because she knows what she wants. She just gets it. Yeah. You go there and you're like, you're like, I love your car. She's like, I'll get you a lease. Yeah. You want a lease? I got <laughs> you a lease. She is like that. Yeah. She's yeah, yeah, brazen. Yeah. Um, yeah. She is brazen. Yeah. So, so you guys have the, the special that's out right now. It's on YouTube. Yes. It's called Our Special Day. <laughs> it's out on YouTube.com slash guys. We fucked without the you and fucked. And uh, we self produced it. Corinne directed it. And uh, yeah, we shot it in Salem, Massachusetts. And I was wondering if you shot it in Bo- like right outside Boston. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The first, the one of the witchy. chicks, one of the chicks that comes up says, uh, I dated a guy up here in Boston. I was like, wait, they shot this in fucking Boston? Yeah, yeah. We wanted to shoot in Salem. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, it's a powering place for women. I mean, you know, I don't yeah. know. Just, don't get me started on the Salem don't fucking witch trial. In Salem. Don't get me started on the fucking Salem witch trial. My favorite part of history to talk about. I might go find a podcast on Salem witch trial. <laughs> uh, you, know, it's, you know, basically. Our first tour was, or our second tour was the Bridget Bishop tour, who was the first person to die in the Salem witch trials. Yeah. Did we you, love Salem Have witch you trials. been to Salem, Bert? I, it's my favorite place in America. <laughs> you almost passed out. I don't know. I don't know if I have. What do you, mean, you, you would know. You would you remember. Would know. It is such a special it's place. Not like any place you, else on the planet. You don't you have forget to go. when you go there. You have you to go. Watch this. Oh, Leanne just sent that to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's Bonnie Rotten. I showed a picture. I had a, oh, I love she's Bonnie hot. Rotten. I took. I took. A, I love I, Bonnie what Rotten. I used to do is if people texted me, uh, it was my sister. If people texted me, I would, uh, and I was looking at porn, I would screen grab it. <laughs> And then send it back to them. This is what you're interrupting. Yeah, yeah it's so funny. Hang on. Oh, you you allow I'll the banner? I'll call you in two seconds, okay? okay bye. Right. You allow banner notifications while you're looking at porn? I used to. I don't. I cut off all notifications. Yeah, you got to do airplane. I cut off, well, you I cut off airplane mode, but yeah. all notifications now. Me too. That's the way to go. Me too. Even on text. It I don't give even, me panic. I have to open the app to see if anybody texts me. Yes, it would give me panic. I text me people too. and then go, they haven't texted back. They haven't texted back. Yep. They haven't texted back. And yep. I was like, oh, I'm not allowing that in my brain. Exactly. Yep. Um. So the specials on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Our special day. YouTube.com. Uh, guys your podcast is up everywhere. Podcast is available. Yes. I saw a t- I saw a tweet you guys put out saying 
we're back up on all podcast platforms. Yeah, right. we went to Luminary and we're still with Luminary. We're exclusive to Luminary. Uh, so if you're a Luminary subscriber, you get guys we fucked a, a week early, but then you also get two bonus episodes, which we, those were where we read the emails that we get. We get yeah. the craziest emails and uh, we kind of are saving our more personal happenings for Luminary, the Luminary bonus episodes, because it's a smaller audience and it just feels a little safer. Like, you know, you, yeah. like we said, having your diary out there is a little... It's almost like, what have we done? You can't no, undo it. I had one of the funnest times doing your podcast. It was one of my favorite. You were favorite, fantastic. You were really times. great. Yes. If you guys ever have guests back on, I'd love to be 100%. back hundred percent. We have a podcast you, studio for now. you at you, any you really? time. Yeah, we have a podcast uh, studio. I'm in, have. I'm in New York at the end of the month. Oh, okay. Yes, well, yeah, please come on. Please okay. come on. Yeah, like I'll, I'll text you guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. But yeah, you know, so yeah, we were behind a paywall for a little while, but now we're, you know, back everywhere and we're putting clips up. So yeah. That's great. You guys, you guys were you guys are killing it. Thanks. I'm so I'm so proud that I consider you friends because I think it means I'm a good person. Yeah, does that it does. make sense? That's like a go, very nice compliment. Because I go, for, thank you. Because I because I because I'm your friend. I feel like that means something for my daughters one day that they'll oh, be yeah. sitting in a fucking dorm room and they'll be like, "Have you ever listened to Guys We Fucked?" And they're like, "No." And they're like, "This is the best podcast." <gasps> and that Georgia will be going like, "This is fucking great." I feel like I know these girls. And then one day. She's gonna go. She's gonna say, "Wait, did they just say my mom's name? Wait, is my dad on this?" And then she's gonna go, "Oh, my dad's a cool person. Like he, he the episode them. where she kept falling and you kept telling stories about her getting injured. That was one of my that favorite guys in fact memory yeah. stories. You kept just telling stories about her getting yeah, she injured. She broke her teeth out. She yeah, fell in London. Put cement in her shoes. Oh fuck. Well, I was so excited to Give meet you some rollerblades on our last time because I was like, oh, I've heard a lot about your <laughs> your injuries. You okay, girl? <laughs> I wish I could bring my daughters on the guys we fucked because they because uh, they would be. I mean, especially, I would love to bring them on and then walk out of the room and then go, so tell me what he's like. Yeah. And then them just be like, you have no fucking idea. But thank you guys for doing this. We'll get Thanks you out of here. For... I'm going to go see if Leanne's here to say hi. Yeah. But thank you guys. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for having us. You're always so us. supportive. We appreciate you.